Big Gab, episode 413 for Monday, January 22nd, 2024. Greetings, folks, and welcome to Gig Gab, the show by, for, and about working musicians. Our sponsor for this episode is greenchef.com slash 60 gig gab, where you get 60% off. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. Here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Billy Butler. How you doing, Billy Butler? I'm good. How are you, Dave I'm good. Hamilton? You are in a slightly different portion of Durham, New Hampshire. But- like six feet away from you. Yeah, maybe. Maybe four. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for uh thanks for doing the episode oh thanks for having me yeah man again yeah no i i i want to keep doing this yeah. this is this is great yep and we miss paul we do miss paul absolutely paul's coming back like in uh less than a month oh yep. nice yeah we'll, we'll uh february 19th will be the ninth anniversary of gig gab it's crazy and so uh i made sure that we scheduled that day to awesome to have paul on the show yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. of course yeah 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 paul I, 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 Paul and I stay in touch pretty regularly. He um, he meant what he said. Like when he left, it wasn't. There was no that, like it, he did. He loves doing the show. That's not what they're saying on Reddit. But. I know. Well, if that's Reddit's <laughs> fault, isn't it? it? In fact, if they weren't, if they were saying the truth on Reddit, I that's when we need to worry. Yes. When Reddit becomes our source of unbiased truth, <laughs> the world is over, Billy. Yeah. Well. I trust Reddit more than anyone else. I'm just saying. Sure. Yeah. yeah, but there's a filter there. There is a filter there. Yeah. They have great music, uh, way to, ways to find music. That's what I found. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Are you finding music on Reddit? I do find music on Reddit. I, I have a, I look for it, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Um, <laughs> of course. You know, yeah. there there's some really great communities with music. It's not. Yeah, you fair. Because it's, uh, uh, it's more um, user um friendly Gen- yeah reddit is compared to like facebook and the rest of those sure um and it's not all ad driven you know it's it's more user driven fair because the users really kind of control the experience yep of reddit so i mean i'm, I'm of course they're a huge company and all that but yeah, 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 yeah. uh their model is is a little closer to user friendly than facebook or or um i mean i guess instagram is kind of user driven a little bit but yeah it's definitely a different algorithm. That's especially interesting. Finding music specifically. I, I yeah, I used to use. Um, and, and yes, hi, I'm Dave, and I'm old. Uh, I used to use. I'm older than you. You are six months older than I am. Me. That's yep. right. Yeah. Um, and Billy and I play in a band together called Bitter Pill. Just to give everybody some context, if you don't remember the bitterpillband.com. There you go. Uh, I used to use Usenet, all the news oh, yeah, groups, sure. yep. for for what you're describing, yeah. like finding music and then also finding fans and Community. communities. Yeah, co- yeah. Correct, all those things. And I hadn't thought about. I missed that yeah. from. I mean, there's Facebook groups for bands and stuff, but it's, it's not. Uh, you don't get to yeah. pick. You don't like. It's, it's more fan clubby than it is actual like. Yeah. You know, hey, listen to this new music. And it's people posturing. And don't get me oh, wrong. Yeah, I know Reddit yeah. has that too. But well, they call it status update for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> it's all about status, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 I like it. Yeah. But maybe uh, I got to dig back into Reddit for, for music stuff specifically. Yeah. I use Reddit probably as much as any other social media. Yeah. I always have. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean you know, I'm kind of a computer geek. Uh, yeah, we're nerds. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I grew up with a computer in the house. And yep. Same. 80s. Yep. Yeah. We, we, we've we often said as we're talking and I, I, like we're way off whatever the topic might have been, but uh, I don't think there was a topic. But it, you and I both had the experience of or have the experience of being, you know, men and people in our 50s who grew up as digital natives. Yeah. We were both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we were there. We were online, yep. just just like our our kids and yep. and you know like it's a weird experience being yeah. a digital native at this age. Yeah, because most people our age are not. That. I think there's a whole show there. Oh, there's probably a, a whole podcast there for real. Yeah, you know because and especially because of New Hampshire. You know, New Hampshire is where the video games were pretty much invented. Yeah, there was a lot of them here. No, they were in, like kind of invented in New Hampshire. Sure, uh, Pong was. Uh, Built in New Hampshire. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I believe Atari started in New Hampshire too. 
I might be wrong about that. I don't think so. I think Atari was West Coast. I might be wrong about that. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's another podcast. Anyway. It's a different yeah. podcast. Sorry, what show folks. is this? This is Gig Gab for, <laughs> yes. for music. So I the I mean, I, I like I said, I I want to have you back semi regularly so we can talk about sure. It's, it'll be interesting to talk about some better pill stuff and I want to get into that. But the the one thing that has been that I've always wanted to talk with you about is four wall we, we talk we've talked for years and use this term called four walling yep. a show. Yeah. Right. Where the the general idea is you rent the room, you You do the gig. You do the gig yeah. with your whatever, your band, you you set the ticket prices, you you could you do do all the stuff, which is different than a club saying we're gonna pay you six hundred bucks you're to basically come. acting like a promoter. You, yeah, yeah, you're you're doing all of what more of the work. Right. It, you know, someone has a venue, you're putting a show up inside right. it. So you're four walling this thing. And it dawned on me, we've talked about this a lot, but the show of what is going to be the show is usually presumed or assumed in the context that we've talked about it because you're doing the show that you would have done at a club if somebody paid you 600 bucks because you're right. bringing your band and you're going right. and you're formalizing this thing. You've put on theater shows. Many times. Yeah, 30, in, in, 30 years. Yeah, yeah for, for decades. Yeah. And in, in addition to also being a, 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 a musician in a band who plays like shows that are just music. And, sure. and I I have an issue with just music because live music is visual art as well. well but sure. it's not a theater show uh, in so much with scripts and, no, yes, and lighting exactly. cues yeah. and like all a of different that. Different medium. It's, yeah, exactly. And so I'm curious mm. that process of... Not just saying I have this show that I know and I'm going to go four wall it. You start with I have an idea for a musical that I'm going to write or even a play. Have you written plays or just I have, musicals? Yeah. Okay, mostly m musical musicals and musical uh, or plays with with music. music. Right? Yeah. yeah, fair. Yeah. So you have this idea for a musical you're going to write, and then you set about writing it. Right. And and then you you know find a venue. And you find people to do it with right. you, yep. and and you get all the way through. So there's this, you know, from raise germ, all the money, raise all the money, hire from, all the designers, from germ yep. to closing night. Yeah, it, it, you uh, you know drive the bus on this right. sometimes, and then other times you'll do shows that you know other people have written or or, yeah, or producing. Times or whatever. that I'm, uh, you know, I'm a musician in the band, in the or, band, uh, playing the lead character or playing supporting character or sure, I'm the lighting designer or whatever. Yeah. I mean, this it's for theater. It's all industry. Like, yeah, I, I'll. What do you need me to do? What do you need me to do? Yeah. Right. Uh, and and so this, I, I, I'd i love to, like, what is, I, I want to talk through that experience uh, because I think there's things that all of us that play in bands or, yeah. or do this can learn from this idea of, okay, so the you, you have this idea for a show, you, right. you've started writing the show, then when it comes time to selecting the right venue for well, that's, this show, yeah, yeah. that's where I kind of want to, like, that's the entry point I want to start with here. Well, it's tough because, you know, there aren't venues to do that. Most theater venues have their own thing going on. Yep. You know, they have, they pick a season. Sure. They do the, sh these are the shows we want to do. And it's usually the same 20 shows yep. they've been doing for the last 30 years. The shows that sell tickets keep selling tickets. Right. It turns um, out. And it's, you know, Whatever. it is what it is. It's yeah. an industry like anything else. Yep. Um, I ended up, um, I was told a lot when I was young that you can't do that. You're not a writer. You're not a creator. Mm. You need to stay in your lane. And I, I fought really hard against that. Did anybody ever tell you you can't play cello as a bass? No. Great. <laughs> I don't know. Somehow you wound up playing cello Somehow as a bass. So there I you go. I did that. I don't, and it was funny too, because like, sidetrack a little bit i i was like nobody's doing this and then i found a band that was doing it. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah uh the dead south uh, in particular uh a huge band um, they're not really that big in the states but they're bigger than most people realize yep um in fact i reached out to him to ask him how he the the, the cello bass player on that how he amplified his cello uh, and we went back and forth a little bit sure um but uh, uh where was i uh, uh producing a show most i was told you can't do that. So I had this idea to write, and I was always writing music. I grew up in a very musical family. Sure. I think the previous episode I was on, I talked a little bit about that. Yep. Um, 
So it was mostly music, and I didn't do musicals. I was doing plays as, yeah. as a young actor. Um, and I was making a living, actually, as a teenager. Not a living, but I, it was a job. I got paid to do it. Yeah. And then musicals kind of started um, entering the uh, um, the communities across the country. You know, musicals have always been popular, but at a certain point, I think it was in the 90s, when it really just became yeah. a thing. It's because yeah. Disney got involved and yeah. all the big, big companies um, so I got into musicals, and I didn't really write musicals. I wrote music, and I wrote plays and scenes oh. and sketches. And it wasn't until – this is the thing, Dave. Like, I had people in my life, and I grew up in a very artistic family, saying, you can't, you can't, you can't. This is what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Even with a, stay, like a very liberal – Stay in the box. Artsy, you're you're, you're, you're box. an artist. This is right. what the box looks yeah. like. You'll never be this. Yeah. So I stopped writing. Oh. And then I met my wife – and uh, in my 30s, she was like, you're, you're really great. You should write more. Huh. Was, and so I did. And oh, I didn't realize that this was a thing that you had sort of put on the shelf. I did, yeah. Wow. Well, I was, you know. No, I, I get it. I understand that, why. You're, yeah. you're, 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 you don't have the ability to do that. Yeah, Dave. yeah. So, right. I, you know, somebody says that to you enough. You start enough to believe people, them. Right? These people that you look up to, especially. Yeah. And she was like, you know, F them. You write, write something. And so I did. I sat down and started writing again. And she's the reason. Huh? You know, I had, I, I've known you for how long? And I, this is yeah. the, I said, no, that's amazing. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, so really it was done at that point. I already had some relationships with sure. certain well, types of theaters and venues. But that's like, okay, so there's lesson number one. Like you, you have to network. Yes. But you also have to have a viable ability. Yeah. Well, <laughs> right. I know. But viable ability sitting in your apartment or your house or whatever yes. doesn't but get that's you. the first thing you need to have. We call that table stakes, Billy. Is that what? What is table? St table stakes. Like when you're going to show up to a poker game. Right. You don't necessarily need to be good at poker, but you got to have the money to put on the table. Absolutely. The table stakes. Because otherwise you can't sit at the table. But you're not going to win unless you know how to play. Right. But the the know how to play in in this really weird right. uh, uh, analogy that we're doing here. <laughs> well, have you met me? <laughs> yeah, is the the networking right? But the table Absolutely. stakes is you got to have some talent. Yes. You got to have and a product. Networking it, it. Yes, but uh, networking you have to have uh, the uh, skills. Yeah, I, I I say talent because that's what people use. But talent is not innate. Uh, um, a passion and all that is, but skill is something else. Yes. Um, but you also have to have relationships and yeah. relation and relationships with um, people you have worked with and created with um, that see you as a viable uh, artist. Yeah. Um, and you, you know, you have to be able to sell tickets. <laughs> you got to, <laughs> you know, uh, yep. you got uh, to unless... put butts in the seats right. and money in the box. Yeah. But Really, what it comes down to is is having the skills and being able to be able to put out a good product, yeah. You know, a, a good piece of work that you're doing, um, and e even if you don't sell the tickets, you have to cultivate that audience anyway. We had this yep. little conversation earlier about yeah. That. You have to cultivate. You have to build it. And and but it's it's not just building it for one show, even if you're no, right? right. Like you you build an audience. Right. Over time, of yeah. of, for, of people who are fans of your work, not of right. a specific piece of exactly. your work. Exactly right, and yeah. there may be pieces that people are like, oh, you know, like well, Gabriel of Frankenstein. People love that; they want sure. me to do it every year, and you know, it's a musical I wrote, rock musical I wrote, uh, which is great. But I have other things I want to do, right? You know, right? Um, yeah, that your pieces, your any individual piece of work, or even selections of work, right? People are going to be a fan of that. Become the that entry is. point, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah but. but but this is no, this is interesting. Like there as as musicians out there, you need to think about the bigger picture and be cultivating that audience for you, right. not just for the show that you have coming exactly. up on Saturday right. night. Yeah. It, it's really working on that. And and we've talked about that in a lot of ways. It's all connecting, it, it, you know, as connecting with your audience, connecting with uh, your fellow artists, connecting yeah. with the venue or whatever. Um, but ultimately, all of that led up to me just wanting to uh, create something new. It's just something that was instilled in me sure. as, as, as a young artist. My brother specifically was like, why are you doing this? Why don't you just do your own thing? 
And I was like, cause this is what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. And all the way up until, you know, I mean, I wrote my twenties. Sure. I wrote music. But you were writing music. Yeah. For myself. I wasn't playing out oh, or anything. No kidding. Oh, yeah. I didn't play out at all. Wow. Um, I would sit in with people. Sure. Sure. Just to be you, in the background. You were playing just not right, your but stuff. Not my stuff because it wasn't huh. good enough. Uh, which is if, absolute, even though no one had heard it, so they couldn't possibly have judged it. Right. I, I understand. Exactly. I, I don't mean to d diminish the no, fact no. that you had been convinced that it would not be good right. enough, even though no yep. one had heard it. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. And and people around me that heard it, like friends and family, yeah. and and you know people I would jam with, they're like, "This is great." I'm like, "Yeah, thank you." You know, I felt like they were humoring yeah. me. You yeah. know, because oh, it's so good. I'm like, mm, "Yeah, I don't believe you." Yeah. Uh, and maybe it wasn't. I don't know. I listened to that this, the early stuff that I wrote. I'm like, oh, "That's pretty good." <laughs> like, I'm not that same person anymore. So sure. I, was, I wish I could tell that person. Keep writing, keep do, writing, do keep your writing. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is what you're describing. I, I, you're not alone. It's certainly not in this room. Right. I, you know, I, I've always done things, and my guess is most, especially musicians, but also just most humans, mm -hmm. go through some version of this, yeah. where you you have an interest in something, a passion, if you will. Right. You start developing your skills on your own, but you wind up keeping it. On your own to a degree. I know a lot of people who do that. Right. Because yeah. you don't, because you, you've been convinced for some reason that it's not good enough. Well, you have society, first well, of all. Well, there's and that. culture yeah. that is going to tell you that, even even though they don't tell you that. It's just the no, it's, kind of the rules. It, it's that sort they of the rules. Right. It's the message. But, yeah. but and it, then you have people like tell you, because I know younger artists yeah. that come to me and they're like, this, this isn't good enough. I'm like, yeah, it is. Who is telling you this? Right. Well, these people at this theater are like, don't listen to them. Just do, do your, your thing. thing. If it sucks, then it sucks. And but you learn. If, right. And you'll and then the next one, it the only thing it sucks compared to is the next thing you're gonna do. Well, this is the thing. Somebody I worked with somebody this weekend, and she said to me, she, you know, before she went on, it was one person show she was doing that she wrote, she yep. created, she's been all over the world with it. Okay. Uh She's like, oh, man, what if what if I suck tonight? What if what if the show sucks this weekend? What if I'm no good? I said, what if it's actually great? Ah. And she's like, I think that's what I'm afraid of. Oh, the fear of success and the fear of failure are the same coin. But it's more a, a failure of what if this is the best thing I ever did mm. and I will never, ever do anything uh, again that's like it. I think that, for me, yeah? is... I'm not afraid to fail. I fail all the time. <laughs> yeah, same. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I think it's Sam Beckett who said, um, fail, uh, fail again, uh, ever fail, uh, fail better. Something yeah. like that. I, Just keep sorry, failing Samuel, better. I, I butchered, yeah. But, yeah. you know, fail better. Ever try, fail better. Yep. Um, but for, for me now, I think... Like, especially with music, because I want to be able to produce, do what I've been doing in the theater all those years. And uh, and I, ha I think I have been applying it to to Bitter Pill, but specifically to performing. That's the band we play in, BitterPillBand.com. Yeah. Uh, specifically to performing, I have this idea that I, wanna do. I want to do. I don't want to have to rely on a venue. <laughs> Right, but we, you know, but I want we a tent. need, but that's the thing is I this. I want what Blue Man Group did yeah. with Area Area One tour or that Cirque du Soleil does. They don't rely on a venue. No, they find a venue they find, somewhere. No, they find a plot of land. Well, and that's put a true. Tent up. That's fair. Yes, they truly put the four walls up. Right? Yep. Because a lot of these bands, they go to the, the festivals and all that. Yep. And, uh, oh, festivals are not four wall unless you're the, the promoter of the well, this festival. Is what I'm saying. It's yeah. like you look at Lollapalooza, something that was yeah. put together by Perry Farrell, yeah. uh, who ended up selling it, obviously. Yes. Yeah. Um, but Perry was like, I want to do my own thing. And created this incredible now institution that only I think it's only Chicago now, right? Isn't all it doesn't? Yeah, it's not the touring thing that it yeah. that it had been. Because I saw it at Great Woods. It's not Great Woods anymore. Yeah, whatever. We call it Great Woods here. It's still. in Man, Mansfield, Mansfield, Mass. It's called um, Great Woods. Nineteen ninety one. Okay, it was. Yeah, uh, it was incredible. Yeah, and it was all Perry Farrell's idea. This one artist uh, in Jane's Addiction I was like, I want to do this festival. I don't want to have to rely on on the venues and literally rented venues across the country. Yes. Right. Uh, so, so how like for someone that it wants to put on a show locally, how do you go about finding a venue? I mean, I realized right? we said the networking, right? right. Like, well, it's not just networking. If you have well, never done it, like 
who are you going to sell it? First of all, you got to think about what your show you're doing. Yep. You know, are you doing a um, a cover band? Are you doing an original music? Are you doing a festival? Are you doing a fundraiser? Are you doing? I mean, there's all kinds of variables when it comes. To I that. have a, I have a question. Maybe I've asked the wrong question. Okay. Or I've asked the questions in the wrong order. Obviously, at some point you have to find or or create, but a venue needs to exist—a place for the people to come and see the show. Or you create the venue. That's what I mean. Yeah. Event, yeah. But a venue needs to exist. You need a place for people yeah. to gather. Correct. For at least for the night of the show, if 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 right. no other time. Right. right. It, it can it can fall apart the and next build day. Build your tent. Yep. And have people come and sit under your tent. So so that's there. The audience, it would seem, is is the the, the first thing to build, right? You yeah. have because if you if you don't think that you can bring people to your your tent, that you it's it's not field of dreams, right? If you build it, people won't necessarily come. Well, that's a little uh, that's the thing with the, the build it and they will come. Yes, you build it and they will come. It doesn't mean just build a venue. Well, right, fair, yes, that's it's not, not just it build the venue. You got to build, build the, the whole thing. thing. You got to build everything. Yeah. Um, and that includes the crowds. Yeah. Why would somebody want to come to see your baseball team play? Why? That's what you, the first thing you have to answer. Why would people want to come and see your music uh, or see your band? Yeah. Why would somebody want to come and see your play? Ooh. Right? Ask the question why. Yeah. 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 And that's kind of a theater thing too is, you know, everything has to have a why. You know, why are you crossing the stage? Why are you saying those lines? There has to be something that connects everything. Yeah. Um, and that includes the scenery. Why is there a chair on the stage if it's not used or it's not helping to tell the to story? To tell the story, sure. Right? Yep. Every single thing should have a why and an answer. Sometimes you don't have an answer. Sometimes it's just why and you leave it open to interpretation. To interpret sure. Right? Yeah. And there's the same thing. You leave thing. too much like that and then, and then well, it becomes then everything becomes yeah, abstract. It becomes a mess. It's a yeah. mess. Which is, it can be okay. Which is a thing. I've seen it's a, absolutely, uh, a and thing. I've had a great time I've, seeing it. Yeah, I used to. Go and I see, think a band could be the same way. Well, like, I've seen Eric Dolphy play. I mean, there's like yeah. it, 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 I saw Lou Reed play. Like, yeah, <laughs> I, I would argue that perhaps Lou Reed followed more of the rules than Eric Dolphy, but but oh, maybe sure. not. I don't different not at rules. The concert I was at. Different rules. Fair. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. But the why is important. Yes. You know, why? Yes. Why At least you, ask why so that you know that you're choosing not to answer it. Yeah. But right. like, why do you want to do it? That's the first thing I would ask. My yeah. Head, why am I doing this? Yep. And I, I say that every day. Why am I, <laughs> why am I doing this? Oh, I'm asking myself that right now. Why did why I hit record? I hit record, right? Um, yeah, I did hit record. Okay, cool. And, uh, and beyond that, you know, you got to find, it's so hard because audiences are so fickle. But, you know, I find when it's just when something is good and it's hard. I know it's subjective. Sure. Uh, especially with music. But there are some things that are undeniable with with art um, that no matter if you're a fan of the genre of music or not, you walk in and you hear somebody play or sing or do something and it moves you yeah. instantly. Even if it's not your thing. Right. Yeah. Uh, I think of like the first time I've heard certain artists, I was like, whoa, I had no idea who they yeah, were. Yeah, but is that, I'm thinking of the times where I have experienced that. Is that more about the charisma of the person? It's all of it. Okay. Yeah. Because I, because when I've experienced that, I, I, I and again, memory is fallible, but <laughs> it, it turns out, I, at least that's what I heard, but I might've remembered that incorrectly too. <laughs> Sorry, it's what I do. <laughs> I know. Uh, <laughs> um, but it it's it's more I am captivated by that human the, or the this package. group of human. Right. Yes. Yeah. This, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. You, like when I first time I heard Perry Fell sing, right? Yep. Most people are like, oh my God, this person's terrible. Sure. But I was like, this chick is amazing. <laughs> people said the same well, thing we, about Getty Lee. I, a, a great example. When I first heard Getty Lee, I was like, "Who is this chick? She's amazing! Oh my yep. god!" Like, yep. instantly looked it up. I was like, "Oh, it's a dude." It's a dude. He's still okay. amazing, right? And I got into Rush. Yep. Right. It's not everybody is Getty Lee, and not no. everybody's Perry Farrell. No, no. And that's the thing about Perry but, Farrell. It doesn't have a great voice. Like, it's not a great voice. Right. But there's something about it. There's a reason why they sold millions and millions of records. And, and yes is you know. the example that comes to mind for me. Yeah. John Anderson. Oh, yeah, totally. He, he yeah. is He is this, I mean, talk about diminutive, right? Like right. He is literally short. I Like if he's, you know, a 5'2 right. or something. Right. Everybody else on stage 
is a actually taller than him and and b so like emily <laughs> far more like if you if you looked at technical abilities on their respective yeah. instruments everyone on stage would blow him away. like he yeah. could not compete with with that songwriting like he right. stands on his own obviously yeah, certainly however even when he simply stands on his own on stage You've got all these people doing these, you know, musical heroics around right, him. Right. And it's hard not to watch John Anderson sure. stand there and almost do nothing. The first time I encountered him was at New Haven Coliseum uh, or maybe Hartford Civic Center. But one of those, you know, hockey rinks in Connecticut. And I went to see the Anderson, Bruford, Wakeman and Howe tour, which was yes, when they weren't allowed to use the name. Yes, because Chris Squire and John were fighting and Chris was doing his own thing. And, uh, but it was great because Tony Levin was playing bass. And so you had like, you know, the rhythm section of King Crimson at this show. Right. So this was ridiculous. Ridiculous. The house lights are still on. Someone's on stage, like getting instruments ready and they start playing a guitar, which now is in the PA, like full in the PA. And in retrospect, I now know this was the beginning of the show, but at first it was like, well, this is a weird way to sound check. You you know, like, why is this live when, when the lights are still on, you know, this is a mistake. And it turns out the person that was on stage was one of the hired guns that they had with them on that tour. Right. But I, I didn't recognize this person. So I just thought they were a, a roadie, right. y- you know, whatever. Sure. So this is on stage and happening and we're watching that. And then, and our seats were on the side of the arena. So we were sort of turned to our right to look at the stage for some reason. I cannot explain. I was drawn as all of us were to look left to the back of the arena where John Anderson starts walking in. He hadn't sung a word yet. He hadn't said anything. He had a microphone and eventually he sang as he walked up and then the lights came down and that was how the show started. Why did we all look at him? How did we know there wasn't even a spot on him yet? But it's that's he's, well, that's just he's magic. Pres- that's presence. It's presence. That's it's charisma. Presence. Yeah. It's all of those yeah. things that, yep. that are unquantifiable. But that, you know it when you see it. That absolutely, and that is something that is generally inherent in a person. That that you right. yeah you can but maybe that learn mean to capitalize any good on it. At anything no other than being like you know a terrible politician. <laughs> yes, it, Which, no. It's it, most politicians are that way. Uh, when, they're, they're very charismatic. They walk into the I, room. Everybody wants to talk to them, and then they open their mouths. It's really <laughs> funny that you say this. We don't talk politics on the show, but I'm about to sort of, but not really. When I moved to Austin in the mid '90s, I wound up doing. Uh, just FYI, music is politics. Just throwing that out there. Music? Art, art is political. Anyway, sorry. No, I, I, I want to come back to that. Sure. Yeah, because yep. that like you are good at blending the two. Most. All musicians are blue. not good I at know. blending the yeah, two. I get it. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I, we had this this um, this bu- business where we were like helping people with their computers and stuff right. called Computer Nerds. And one of the things we did was we would write custom databases for people because, you know, that they needed it yeah. and there was good money and we had that Still skill. Thing. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so uh, we, prior to me joining, they had started this job and then I wound up kind of being made point person on it. We were writing the campaign contribution tracking database for the governor, George W. Bush campaign. Sure. And, uh, and so, you know, we would do most of the work in our office to like rewrite the thing. He did very well in Texas. Yeah. yeah. And this was for his, 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 anyone became the president. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. This was for his second term uh, that I, but like he was in the middle of his first term as governor and, and running for the second term. So they needed to make some changes to the database. I was in the office rolling out this uh, new version on one of their computers. And I am like heads down, super focused with my back to the door. Same experience as I had with John Anderson. I needed to look left. Suddenly, I needed to turn around. Yeah, I felt that presence. And and he was there. Another short dude, too. Correct, yeah. 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 And he was there. (laughs) And I had this overwhelming need for this human to like me. Like, it was fascinating. Yeah. he, like, I wouldn't have that need if you watched it. <laughs> well, it, it, but it wasn't. It wasn't because I. It, it had nothing to yeah. do 
with what no, his job was or his politics I, or anything. It's not the first time I've heard that. Yeah, and about my George guess, Bush specifically. My yeah. guess is that that's true of most certainly presidential Absolutely. candidates. They have or, to be. You you have, have to, to be. be. Yeah. Right. And I think that's uh, the same with being a performer. Yes. You, you have need to some have, version of that. You, you can't uh, turn your back on the audience, right? And I don't mean right. that literally. Um, because you can't turn no, your back on the audience. You have to be aware um, of your audience. You have to connect. Yeah. The whole point of making art is to connect with whoever you're making the art for. Thank goodness that's not true about podcasting. Otherwise, I'd be totally out of a job. You had to connect with no, your I audience. No, I know. I'm I saying mean, it's in jest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. no, I'm I, very I aware of this. Yeah. 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 Uh, and maybe we won't connect with the George W. Bush stuff, but, you know. Uh, <laughs> no, it was just fascinating. No, like, just it was so. really interesting. It was like, yeah. I and I, I wanted nothing more than to, like, sit down and have a beer with this guy. It was yeah, fast, sure. a fascinating yeah. just urge. And it was and he like, just happened to become the president of the United States. And then there he was did, that. He did all right. He did okay. Uh, yeah, in, at least uh, on that scale. Moving away from politics. Sure. Because people won't like my politics. Um, well, some people might. Some people might not. <laughs> yeah. Come generally. to a better bill show, folks. Yeah. Like I said, Billy, you are good at blending those two things in yes, a way that, uh, uh, that that's people... being literal though yes aware i'm uh, yeah, saying aware. that all yeah. art is political and uh inherently um and that goes back to creation uh, in, of art. in that it's about the people it is uh, and yeah. uh, uh you know politics is about contemporary things happening now and and um you know commenting on things and you know that's another conversation no but that's what but, that's what music is too yes right? and music is art just saying. All right, Gig Gab fam. <laughs> My, I'm moving away from, from politics uh, yeah. um, back to producing your own work. Having charisma, sure. I know plenty of people, though, that don't have that, yep. but they get on stage and, they can and perform. they're really good at what they do. Yes. Right? Whether it's playing an instrument or whether it's singing or acting or whatever it is, yep. they just have that. Yep. Right? And it's not a matter of them uh, having the charisma. They just have the skills and the ability and the talent to do that. Yeah. You don't need the charisma to no, succeed with this. No, you don't need to be with this. a president to be able to do right. that. Right. You don't. Ha- yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, success, and there's different versions of it. It's not binary right. that you have it all or none. Right. But, yeah. and success is subjective. We know that. Yes. Um, but producing your own work is, is thankless because nobody thanks you because you're doing all the you're, – you're, you're driving the boat. Uh, and being able to do it is uh, a privilege, but at the same time, and maybe we can go after the break, we can come back to it as, as why to produce your own work. All right, Gig Gab family, it is time for a tasty tune up for your meal game with our sponsor, Green Chef. Let's rock your kitchen. Picture this. You're back from a gig. Your stomach's growling louder than your amp. What do you do? You whip out a Green Chef box and turn your kitchen into a backstage buffet. Whether you're a keto keyboardist, a paleo percussionist, or a vegan vocalist, Green Chef has got your back with meals that are like a VIP pass to clean eating city. Say goodbye to the same old sad sandwiches. Green Chef delivers whole foods that'll have your body feeling like it just nailed a solo. It's not just food, it's fuel for your next encore. And hey, Who knew that gut health could rock so hard? Their new gut and brain health meal plan is like a headliner for your health. Each bite's a note that plays perfectly in tune with your body. Plus, as a working musician, who's got the time to hunt for organic, cage-free, or sustainably sourced goodies? Green Chef does the legwork so you can do the fretwork. And here's the kicker. Green Chef and HelloFresh jam together. More choices, more flavors. It's like having a world tour of tastes right at your fingertips. Switching between the brands is my secret chord progression to mealtime harmony. And now you can too with a sweet deal. You ready for the crescendo? Go to greenchef.com slash 60giggab and use code 60giggab to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. That's right. 60% off plus 20% off your next two months at greenchef.com slash 60 gig gab. Now go rock your meals with Green Chef and our thanks to Green Chef for sponsoring this episode. All right. Um, I want to talk about 
running an original band, running a band in general. Sure. But, you know, you you certainly are the, whether you like it or not, the leader of Bitter Pill in that you, you are the- I have the, no issue with that. You are the, right. I mean, it's <laughs> it, it's true. Yes. It, it's just how it, it's just how it is. Uh, you are not a dictator by nope. any stretch of the imagination. Uh, no. nope. <laughs> in fact, you're one of the most collaborative people I've ever worked with. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I well, appreciate that. It's true. I work hard at it. That is is obvious. Yeah. 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 Because because I because you and I are we have a lot of similarities and being and we having, disagree wholeheartedly on many things. on some other things. Yes. Correct. Yeah. But we're but we're similar humans in that we have the tendency to be. Um, Resolute in our convictions. Absolutely. 100%. And that can make us control freaks. Yep. And so actively working not to be in a collaborative environment is, is like it, it, it's something you work on. It is a skill that can be developed. It has to be developed. It's yep. not just something you well, have to learn. You yeah, have to yeah. learn. Yes. You know, like you have to learn. People have to teach you to hate. You have yeah. to learn to love. Yeah. You have to learn to care. You have to learn to yeah. you know, collaborate. And, yep. and you have to work with people who are willing to collaborate. Well, that too. Yes. Yeah. Otherwise, you wind up being taken advantage of. At least yeah. I've found. Yeah. Like, if I'm, I have been taken I, advantage of, I can't even tell you how many times. Yeah. And it's because I'm a, a, too much of a collaborator. You, you're, you're actively collaborating when someone else is actively like just right. sucking that from you. Yeah. So, uh, but leaving the, the negative part of, parts of this out and, and <laughs> focusing on the positive. No. You, it's called bitter pill. Babe. I get it. I know. I'm in the band. I'm yes. aware. Yeah. Uh, but like keeping a band together is no small feat. Yeah. And especially with seven members now. Right. Yeah. And 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 Bitter Pill keeps growing. I know. Uh, like <laughs> started out um with a four piece originally and stayed a four piece, but with no drums. And then, well, uh, yeah, you're talking about yeah. the, the bitter pill that started gigging because then because yeah. there was I mean, there was the first bitter pill thing which had a bunch of people in it well, that we all, did as a stage you know, was, show kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, it was kinda of, yeah, it was a stage yeah, it was a stage, a stage show. show. Yeah. For lack of a, for lack of a better, better term. It just had uh, yeah. performers and dancers yeah. and singers in it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it was still all my music. Right. And it was all, yeah, all we were music, playing. No, no dialogue or anything. Right. There was no linear story. It was just no, 24 it was vignettes. Of my songs. Yeah. yeah. It was, yeah. it was essentially like live music videos. Yes, exactly. For, for yeah. again, for lack or of a better term. Or going to see term. a band play 24 songs with dancers and singers. With dancers and, and yes. it's the same thing. Yeah, uh, that's it's fair. theater, you know. It, it, well, um, that's, yeah. So you. But it, trying to keep, trying to herd, especially in original work, um, it's difficult. And especially at the level we're at, because we're kind of a lower tier um, level band when yep. it comes to commercial, right? And, and money. Money. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. and, and be, yeah. being commercially Funding. viable. Yeah. yeah. Like we can't get certain gigs because we don't have a big enough following. Right. And I have no issue with that at all. I would love a bigger following, but it takes time to cultivate that. Yep. And we're not building a commercial band. Right. And this goes back to what I was saying about producing your own work. What you, whether you're a band or whatever you're doing, it's going to take time to build an audience, to build your fan base. You can't expect to make money making art, <laughs> especially these days. Especially not in this not time. right out of the gate. Especially, no. oh, like, well, you never know, though. I mean, but that's the thing: things can catch fire, and all of a sudden, you and know, you, you're on the Grammys, yep. and you're winning Grammys, and you're touring the world. Yep. Uh, I always say overnight success takes about twenty years, and you're not. I mean, that's because you don't know, you know, it, look at somebody like Taylor Swift, yeah. you know, who had everything given to her, you know, a yeah. dad in the industry yeah. writing for these great stars at 14 years old. Um, but it took her 10 years to even get, with that, even with that, to yeah. get to the level at 24 years old where she was at 24, which is yeah. pretty big level. Uh, yes. Even more now. Well, <laughs> like, way more now. Insane. But yeah. it still took her yeah. that time of working and developing. And it's the same thing with. Yeah, because she has, like, if you were to take a snapshot of Taylor Swift in in today's world, yeah, she there's enough there that resembles flash in the pan overnight success yep. that it would be easy if you didn't know the history right. to say, oh, this is going to be over in a year. Right. I don't think it's going to be over in a year. Yeah. It could be though, but she like, cultivated her audience. But that's the difference. And she connected with her audience, yes, uh, and cares. Yep, she's not um, this egomaniac who is isolating themselves and abusing everybody around them. Yeah. You know, there's plenty of examples of that, of uh, actors and musicians who do that. And yeah. now they're no, nowhere. And now they're, yep. But you may never get to any level as an artist. That's right. The point is to make art. 
And if you want to make money, go work at McDonald's. You'll make money at McDonald's. You will. You yes. can get a great job yeah, at they, McDonald's. They guarantee your hourly rate even. Yeah. And <laughs> like a management's like $50,000 a year to start or something like that. Like Or more. Or yeah. more. Like go yeah. get a job there and make art. Yeah. You can do both. Yep. You know, the, there's this thing about you have to love what you do to pay your bills. Sure. And I just don't agree with that at all. Yep. Because artists, most artists I know don't make enough money to pay the bills with their art. Yep. And it, why would you want to compromise your art to make money, right? Yep. If it's not commercially viable, like, oh, I want to change how I do things. No, make what you're making. Go make money elsewhere. Yes. But don't expect when you four wall that venue, you rent that venue, bring your band there and three people show up. You can't expect that to, uh, you can't expect to sell out. Right. And even if you do Especially sell out. original work. Yeah, but even you know? if you do, you know, sell out or sell the venue, sell a gig well, well, now start thinking about what you learned so that you can do it for the next one. Right. Yeah. Right. And yeah. keep going. Keep making art. This, I yeah. mean. Well, okay. So it's that keep going part that I'm really, I, I want to like, I want to talk more about because right. it's tough keeping a band together. Yeah. And you have done something in Bitter Pill successfully that I would I, I'm certain, it, and I, I I probably kept quiet about this. Maybe I didn't. But when it was first proposed to have a sub fill in for a gig uh, for our original band, yeah. I was like, I, I did not. I was a <laughs> non-believer, and that's putting it kindly. Yeah. Right. Like I, I it, you know, it's like, it. oh, this is a stupid idea. We should just cancel the gig. It was. I think it was John, our yeah. guitar player, yeah. couldn't make it, and you're like, oh no. I got somebody else that's going to be totally fine. It's like Jimmy's amazing. Jimmy Doherty's amazing. Oh Jimmy, God. but I, and I would happily play and he's played yeah. with us several times, yeah. but that first and he's gig, not John. No, not at all. That's the thing yeah. is like, we, we put a successful version of our band out there that I was happy to stand behind right. once I knew I had no confidence yeah. going in. I mean, it was like, I'm going to do the gig. I'm not going to like pull a diva thing a and not show up. Too. And that like, was also yeah. a weird gig. It was this private party, yeah. but he's played some public gigs with us too. Yep. And he's yes, fantastic yep. yes. and he fits, but like the idea of having a sub in, in any band is controversial for, you know, for as, as a term of me. efficiency, but an it's original band, it's weird to me. I mean, I get it on the, like the highest levels because there's millions of dollars involved. Yes. There's, you know, corporate involved. Yeah, in all insurance of companies insurance, say you have yeah, to go do this. You have to do it. Like, <laughs> yeah. And yeah, you yeah, have yeah. contracts and blah, yes. blah, blah. Yes. But like, it's just music, man. It's not some sacred cow. Yeah. You know, I, and I've something that I've realized recently, like, you know, it's, 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 it's just art. Yep. Like, yeah, it's not the original. It's not John McCormick, our, our amazing. Yeah. My 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 mate, my my man, my my friend, my, right? You know, cohort, my co-writer, my creator, like it's mine, 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 mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, uh, at the same time, like this is the way I look at it. No one is indispensable. Fair. Everyone's replaceable. Hundred percent. And why can't that be within a, a, an artistic endeavor like Bitter Pill? As long as we can, and you, and we do, like Bitter Pill. Our audience under our audience trusts that what we put on stage as bitter pill is going to be entertaining. Yep. I, I was going to say good, but that's that's such a subjective term. I hope it's and good. Entertaining is also subjective, but but it's different than just good, right? right? Like they know that our goal is to go entertain. Our my goal is to connect. C connect, sure. Which to me is a little deeper than entertaining. Yeah, it is. Because entertaining is kind of like talent. Like it's yeah, just a, kind yeah. of a vague word. But we're, but it, connecting just, is yeah. is that thing. Yeah. Is it, whatever we put on stage is going to connect. Yeah. It's going to entertain. It's yeah. going to it's going to give you an audience member something to do for a couple of hours that right. you're going to be happy you chose to do. Right. Like that. That's the thing. Or you're going to think about it. Or it's going to be a thing. For whatever. You. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. And and our audience trusts that. And and obviously has been fine when we've had Jimmy. In fact, I've had people come up to us and say, gosh, you know, when I saw John wasn't here, I was a little surprised. But yeah. wow, like this was great. Yep. And it's like, yep. But you knew that we could do that. Yeah. I did not know yeah. that we could do that. And, and I and part of that's informed by having had subs in different other bands that I've played in. And it's always like not always, but yeah. sometimes it's like, oh. 
like, let's just get to the end, please. Well, you know, you know a lot of times these things are personality based. I, I think I, maybe they're often always. I mean, again, I table don't, stakes is. I don't want to play that game, that personality game. I want to make right. art. I want to create. Yep. I want to make music. Uh, and I, I, I want it to not just be entertaining. Uh, and I don't. I don't want it to just make people happy. I want to make people mad. I want to make people hate me. I want people to, to love me. I want yeah. I want all of that because that's the point to me of making art is to move people, is to to have people feel something. Yep. You know, uh, a lot of people say that, you know, I go to these things so I don't have to think. I don't have to do anything. I can escape. When in reality, it's the opposite. You are actually reconnecting yeah. with who you are as a human being. Well, I think it's. I think both of those things are true. It's they're, they're saying I, I. I don't want to think about the things I usually think about. Right. I want to escape from the things I'm usually trapped in or or right. it, like stuck in. And the way to do that is to give yourself something else to immerse yourself in, which right. is... Well, to remind you that why you're a human being. Well, that, and that hopefully that... your that, life isn't just your job. Right. That your life isn't just the bills that you have to pay. Yeah. That your life is actually has deep meaning. People love you. People care about you. Yeah. You know, so, uh, but that escape... I mean, I always say that, you know, uh, reading music, like playing a musical, especially right. a complex one where right. I really have to like, or one that I don't know, which right. therefore is complex if I'm sight reading it, right? yeah, even bet. if it's super simple, yeah. it's like, don't screw it up, Dave. <laughs> like, we're all counting on don't you. Don't let them know you're screwing Don't it up. let them know. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. But yeah. that, I love that. And I think of that as an escape. Now it is not like, I'm not, not thinking I'm only thinking about playing that part. I yeah. can't possibly think about. Oh, you have to focus on the moment. What's going to be on? What's going to be for dinner? What was going on at the no, office? You're in the moment. You're this in is a, the moment. This is a theater and that's thing. That's what we. This is a. This is what actors do. You have to be in the moment at every single moment. Yes. And know what's coming. That too. You got to do both. Focusing on that, but you have to focus in on the moment and play the truth of the moment. Yep. Because otherwise, the audience is not going to be there with you. Right. So if you're on stage and you're playing and you're in a song and you're not in the moment of that song, people will know yes. that you've disconnected and that you're, uh, even you're if you're it highly in. skilled, you're, you're phoning it in and people will know, even yep. if you're not like really showing that you're phoning it in. And no? that, this is interesting because I was going to ask you about like the, the, you know, the vision of, of how you, how you approach bitter pill, but you just, you just explained that. Yeah. Like, that, and I know it's not unique to Bitter Pill for you. You do this with pretty much everything you yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. But I tell you, playing music, especially your own music, is completely different than anything, any theater, any acting, any of oh, that. Oh, uh, agreed. I mean, there's similar. there are similar, similar elements, But of when course. I'm in the moment, it yeah. is, it is uh, for me, it's, it's like a meditative state. Yeah. Uh, and that I'm uh, connecting to whatever it is on another level. Yep. That I don't experience in any other way. Same. It's yeah. it's religious. It's you know. No, being on stage is spiritual. Is, it's all of that. Is is the, the the closest thing I could come in my life to describing religious moments. Yeah. Yeah. When it's the right moment, there are yeah. times I've been on stage when it's like I can't. Wait oh, to I can't get wait out to get here. off. Yeah. 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 And can't it, wait it, to like, drink. That's gonna happen, right? Yeah. Like oh, wait, oh, I have a drink right here. Yeah. Like <laughs> what's on TV over there? Yeah. I'm watching the hockey game. Yeah. You know, at the bar, or whatever. Like, that, like certainly I've experienced that. But, but when it's right, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. And I think that's why everybody listening who plays, and I know not everybody who listens plays, and that's great. But everybody who listens who plays, like that's probably a part of why we choose to do this thing. Well, and I tell you, audiences have come up to me and said, you guys are so great. I, you know, I'm such a fan, sure. but it's so obvious how much you love playing <laughs> and how much you all love each other. Yep. And it's, it, it's so much fun to watch. They're like, it's more than just music. And I know. I'm like, absolutely. That, and I think it, that- the, It's funny because every one of us, Except maybe John, he's like he can be a curmudgeon, but he he no, doesn't like he to be. He has so much love. That's the he thing. Is, he's he is, he's such a good person. He is such a softy. He puts on this like I know this veneer sometimes. Sometimes, most but, of the time, he's very. But very most good. of the rest of us in the band are curmudgeonly and and can be yeah. like Mike is bitter. definitely yeah the curmudgeon of we, the band. But we yeah. can be bitter and and Absolutely. and sarcastic and and all of those sort of negative things. 
But when we put Bitter Pill on stage, yeah, it, well, it's cathartic it's, too. It, yeah, thing. the only thing we can communicate is joy. It's yeah. like it's even the like, weirdest. Thing. I mean, I, I write these like terrible, yeah, depressing, uh, <laughs> uh, political, all these like just deep dark songs, but they're fun. They are fun. Yeah, one That's of our new songs that it. I I think you heard. Actually, we've been in writing sessions. You have yeah, so they, they have, there have been writing sessions. Yeah, that, it's just three of us. Me and Emily and John are writing yeah. together. But I, I want to hear about this. This is like inside baseball now, folks. Oh, sure, Because yeah. Billy and I haven't talked since the latest but writing session. a song session. called Hate. I've heard Hate. I <laughs> yes, remember. We have. played it a little a bit. A little bit. But yeah. We got it down now. Okay, cool. It's, <laughs> I, I want to name the next record Hate. <laughs> of course. Just because. You heard it here first, Just because it's so appropriate. It is. Especially the time we're living in. And the song is Oh, you know what? The album cover should be. Could be. Oh, sure. I, 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 yeah, I, I, no. I dislike the word should. That's why, well, so that's why I, I corrected care. myself. Yeah. That's just a mean doesn't thing. mean it's going to happen. No, no, no. <laughs> but it could be like the word hate in the sky yeah. and a pool of water below it and reflected in the same font at the same size, yeah. the word joy. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. see. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Like, like, no, these I'm are in. St- I'm crazy in. ideas. Yeah, but it's yeah, yeah. ironic. Yes, it's the irony of it. The That's why I like it. to do that for the album cover so that we can help people get over the, no, 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 we under, we yeah. get it. And like, I think that song's not a great example of it, but because <laughs> it, it's, I think it's, I think it's obvious that the song's ironic. When you hear it, you'll, yeah, of course. Yeah. But there are songs like Calm is not ironic. No. Calm it's is a good very, song. Thank you. And it, if people, but if people, I guarantee you there are some people perhaps a lot of people who don't listen very closely to the lyrics and just enjoy the catchy little dun, 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 yeah. right. And they're into yeah. it and they, and then there's this rap section, which is yeah. kind of cool and that's great. And they, yeah, they might what's not, saying, what's being said, they may not be paying attention <laughs> well, and too is, closely. And I, I made it, I wrote it specifically to be on the nosy, but which nosy? Yep. I know. Though if you really sit down and look at it, you're like, oh, it's pretty obvious. I I, yeah, who, I know which way it about. goes. <laughs> right. But it could go. It, you and it could, has. Yep. And it has. I've had, you know, MAGAs come up to me like, yeah, that song. I'm like, mm, that song doesn't mean what you think it means. But to them it does. And that's why I love it. Yep. Because they connected with it. Yep. Uh, and it speaks to them. Unfortunately... It's not the right way. <laughs> it's not your way. It's, it's not, not my, the intended no, way. Exactly. Right. It's not the intended way. But, but that's the, the thing. Time, Once you put music out there. That's it, what I wanted. And yeah. I, I want to be able to connect with people who yes. I disagree with. Yes. Uh, and maybe they'll hear my side. But from, and it's not a matter of my side. It's just my opinion. Right. In a poetic way. Well, it's, it, yeah. I really try to avoid being too on the nosy with things because it alienates people. And I. That's the thing that amazes me is, and I said earlier, you are someone who is good at combining your poli- your your politics, like, yeah. your, well, your yeah. partisan politics yep. with your music in a way that I'm sure it alienates some people. I'm sure but it does. Whatever, but yeah. not like not so much that it's alienating anyone out out there specifically, specifically, right? right? And I don't. And, but and not I, everybody's good at this. No, and I try not to do that in like my regular life with my the people I know that I don't yeah, agree with politically. Sure, because um, it's just toxic and doesn't get anything done. My my advice to musicians out there is if if you already have developed this skill, great, you're you're fine. Yeah. If you want to develop this skill, that's great. But make sure you develop it before you bring it on stage. What drives yeah. me nuts yeah. are people who are not who don't have this skill, and then. S- gain an audience and yep. then and this is true of podcasters too and this is why you will never hear me talk about politics on right. a, any of my shows a, a it's an escape for my listeners but that escape from from having to listen to politics partisan politics it, to partisan politics yep. yeah is uh is a byproduct of me not being good at combining the the thing that yep. i am good yep. at with that so guess what i don't do I, it and i always say put it in the art Yes. Put it in the art. Put it in your work. Yes. Let your work speak. But for this you. is my work. I, I know. You, you but, know what I'm saying? Like but I you can't but, be too on the nosy with it. You can't be too on the nosy with it. That's what your gig is. Unless that's your work. Right. Right. There are podcasts that I listen to that are specifically oh. about certain types of politics. Of course. And you know, I'm usually rah rah rah, uh, but I'm also not a hundred percent in anyone's pool. Sure. So yeah, yeah. But the last thing, even. 
people that are, in my opinion, uh, I don't, I don't want to. Um, then I'm, then don't, because yeah, I'm going to get you, you back know, to the bitter pill writing stuff. Like what, what else? Yeah. You said that there. How many new songs have have you guys come There's up? There's a lot. Great. It's a lot. Oh, I'm excited. We have at least a records worth. I mean, we oh. have. Yeah, we've already had with two or yeah. three records worth of music, yeah, but yeah, it's yeah, a matter yeah. of like what we're gonna pick. Yeah. Um, but there's good stuff coming. There, I think. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, uh, John's got. Do we get to hear bunch. any? Do I get to hear any demos before we? Yeah, like, we're gonna play them together. Soon. Okay, great. Because um, I'd love to come into that next rehearsal. I with... just think Emily is is really coming to her own. Oh, good. As a songwriter, I mean, she already had, but like. Leveled, she leveled just, up. Yeah, Emily is. Uh, Emily's is my daughter, but Billy's she's also daughter, lead but she's singer. Lead singer and, the yeah, band. she's gonna be yeah. twenty nine. Huh. A month. I'm, I'm sure she's really glad that you told everybody that. She didn't care. Okay, great. No, yeah. She, uh, um, have you met my family? We don't I really have. care about that. Stuff. Yeah, no, I. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's it, you it, said some new covers coming. Yes. What are the new covers and, coming? You know, the funny thing about Emily's songwriting, the difference between our writing styles is she's very. I mean, there's so many. I could tell you so many differences well, between your writing styles. Specifically, yeah. mine is political, usually socio topic. Yeah, topical. Yeah, that's um, where you draw your inspiration. Yeah, from. that's yep. where generally where I draw my inspiration from. Yep. Uh, Emily draws hers from emotionally. Yes. Uh, and because uh, she's so uh, such a deeply em empathetic person. Yeah. Uh, and her experiences too. She's worked with um, dementia patients. Right. Uh, the elderly um, in hospice. Now she works. Um, with uh, an organization to help homeless teens get into homes, uh, into apartments. So, <laughs> yep. you know, what do I do? I, I make art. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> like that's pretty much all I do. Uh, and I, you know, I do production work and da, da, da. Yeah. But I, I have empathy. I know you do. I'm aware. <laughs> yeah. I'm but aware. Two different writing styles. And then we have John uh, who writes, who's another deeply emotional, yes. uh, deeply, uh, not emotional, but uh, empathetic human being. Um, and his politics are kind of super subtle. Oh yeah, you know yeah. when it comes to his writing. But most of his writing is is human based. Yep. Right. Yeah, he uh, he is good at that yeah. sort of connection with with the everyman. If every you will. man, yeah, absolutely. Because yep. uh, he's not he's an everyman. He is. You know, he's yes. he worked in sales for twenty five years, yeah. and now he works. Uh, he's uh, also in real sales. estate. Yeah. I mean, no, he <laughs> yeah, worked but like, different sales. No, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Ad sales. Yep. Uh, uh, yep. And he's been a professional musician his whole life. So yep. it, all of that combined, yeah. he just has a really interesting perspective. Yeah. Wow, cool. I'm yeah. excited to hear these songs. That, so three what are the, different what are the covers? perspectives? Uh, one is a uh, uh, Betsy Hutton, I think her name was. Okay. Um, she wrote this song, Your, Your uh, Murder, Love Love is Murder or something. Uh, uh, I'll look it up. I yeah, got Emily it. Yeah. sent me a, a version of Murder, it. Murder, He Says? Murder, he says. I think it was, was I right about the name? Betsy? Betsy Hutton. Be Betsy yep. Hutton. Betty. Betty, Betty Hutton. Hutton. Betty Hutton. It's yep. funny because we have that song, Murder, he Betty says. the Stripper. I know, yeah. <laughs> um, it's a sad story with Betty Hutton. Oh, such a sad story. Um, but Emily sent me this uh, uh, Great. version of her singing it with the ukulele just on the phone. I'm sure, like, sure. Oh, my God, this is amazing. Yep. <laughs> like, she doesn't, she's going to hate, If she if, maybe she won't listen to this, but. Uh, um, she hates when I say, you know, how amazing she is. Sure, because uh, she's proud papa, but also, but also like, it's, it, like I, I don't disagree with you. Yeah, yeah, I, like I, in fact, I, that's the wrong way to say it. I yeah. wholeheartedly agree with yeah. you. Yeah, and she sent me this, just yeah. this phone recording. I'm like, oh my god, this is amazing. Like, yeah. do you, like I just want to play for people. Like, he listened to this. Listen just, to, just this. This Here is you go. one of the best singing yep. artists in the world right now, and like nobody knows who she is. Yep. What? Ten people know. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, we got like seven thousand uh, Facebook followers. It's fine. Yeah, I mean, we have yeah, we have like an audience. Saying, yeah, we, we actually do. do. Yeah. It, like, it, but yeah. she is, she's just yeah. ridiculous. And I, it's not just the proud papa. I know talent. Yeah, I know, I know it. I just yeah. I know. Yeah. Um, there is another Tom Waits cover she wants to do. Um, <laughs> of course, I can't remember which one it was. All right. Um, I have a couple of covers I want to do. What? What's one of them? Name one. Uh, then I have a question I want to ask before we have to wrap up. I can't think it off the top of my okay. head. Okay. Then I have a, I, have, I, I, do I have actually a have a list of about 150. Well, I mean, right. I do, but. We, yeah, we have a Slack channel full of them. Yes, so we do. Eventually, we eventually will, we might we will not mine do that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you mentioned earlier, just to set this up a little bit for folks, that you, in addition to being a performer and a writer in both theater and musical endeavors, you also understand and i'm 
understating it here, sound and lighting mm-hmm. and all of those things. You yep. worked as a professional sound engineer. Yep. You have worked as a professional lighting designer. I was doing lighting this morning. Well, that's yep. that. So we can talk about sound, but we've we're we're know, testing people's so patience. Yeah. No, but I like I I want to I want to talk about sound at some point with you because you yeah. and I. I think we have a lot that we can talk about. So we'll we'll sure. make that sort of the primary topic Gear the next gab. time you're on. Yeah, Sound exactly. Gab. Sound gab. Yeah. yeah. But I want to do a, a little bit at least right here with light gab because you do really understand lighting. Mm-hmm. You I mean it's it's something that not only interests you but you actually have developed skill yes. with. Yeah. So for bands out there who are saying, "Okay, I've been listening to Gig Gab for almost 9 years and I, yes, I'm on board." Music is a visual art. I agree. I know my band needs to look good on stage. And part of that it involves how we present ourselves and how we dress and all of those things. Or you can look bad. Or you can look, but you like have to. You are, you know. A, like, right. Acknowledge that whatever you bring on stage is your costume. Right. And it could be a t-shirt and cargo shorts. That's fine. Just know that whatever you're wearing is. So why are you wearing why, those cargo shorts? Right. Right. That's the the why. Is that part of who you are? If it is, is it part great. of the character you're developing for well, how you do shows? It is to the audience yeah. whether you think it is or not, yeah. right? But let it, and that's a great conversation to yeah. have too. Uh because everything you wear on stage is your costume. Yeah. Yep. Let's talk about lights. What's if a band has to it has has so nothing hard with a band. What's the what's the first thing a band should think about lighting? Uh, in terms of like getting, like, should they right. be worried about? Well, if you're four walling it, then you need, you know. No, but like for know. a band that's playing clubs, like that maybe have enough light to keep you from stumbling on stage. Right. What's the first thing a band, and even if the, even if they a club has lighting, like where should you be aiming the lights? What what right. what are what are sort of the basics that somebody can do going in? Oh my God, it's such a. I know. We'll, we'll start huge, with this, and know, then we'll like, have uh, you yeah. back on. Yeah, the yeah, trouble yeah. is, is you go to these clubs and they have their own gear, and their know. own people, and they don't want you touching their stuff. Let's um, say they let you touch their stuff, yeah. right? Or it's your stuff. It like, depends on what your band is and what okay. what mood and all of that. Yep. Uh, do you want to be seen? Some bands hide behind uh, darkness. You know, some bands use a projector yep. to light them. And oh. uh, so you're projecting on bodies. Yeah. And you're seeing an image on that person's body, which I think is super cool. That's cool. Something I want to do. It can be a thing. That would right? be great Something for I us. Do. Yep. Yeah. Uh, there are fundamentals in lighting, but let's talk. Let's, you know, let's, angles and wattages yeah. and well, fixtures. It, and, let, me, let, me, it, let me zoom us out a little bit more. Yeah. Um, for a band that wants. A, to be seen on a stage that doesn't just look like it has, you know, your um, the the spotlight that you were going to hang in the, the the can that you were going to hang in the garage, right? right. Like work a band that wants that. to look one <laughs> stage beyond work lights, right. which again could be a shtick, right? right. Like, and I've seen. Well, bands that's what do I'm saying. Lights. This yeah. comes down to the why. Like, what that's are you fair. trying to get across? What do you, you know, what? Yeah. You the lighting uh, changes the look of something simply by moving it to a different angle. So if you're using oh. one light, right? Yep. The place you want to do it, uh, you know, technically is a yes. forty-five degree angle, pointing at you. Pointing so in way, front of the performer, right, 40, 45 forty-five degree, degree, degree angle. angle. Got it. So it covers your your uh, your body or whatever yep. it is, but it also it's about the shadows on your face. You know, at a forty-five degree angle, you don't get the shadows that you generally would get. Yep. Right. You move it up a little bit, you start getting shadows underneath your eyes. Right. And your eyes begin to disappear. Uh, You get shadows under your nose. Yep. Uh, With that one light, we're talking specifically. Yeah. Yeah. You start moving it down. Now it changes if it's at a 90 degree angle pointed at your face. Right. Yep. Now you're kind of washed out. Because it's completely, it's covering up all the shadows, all the natural shadows you get. There's no depth. You're you're two dimensional at that point. Ah. Move it down lower. Now you're getting shadows on your your forehead. Yep. And you're looking up your nose, but it also creates a, a bigger than life thing. Right. You know, I love footlights. Yeah. You know, uh, I've done shows where uh, theater and music where it's just footlights yep. and it creates a certain type of mood, and yeah. a certain type of look. Um, so like if a band is, is wanted to get a couple of lights and they want to create like something moody, just get a couple of work lights. You can get, you can get yeah. them now that with an app that changes the color sure, and just put them on the floor and point them up. You know, or have them come in from the side creates a whole other mood. 
Um, these are things that take a little bit of skill you and learning, yeah. right? And YouTube is your friend. What, what was the thing? Oh, the, the quote is, try again, fail again, fail better. Yes. That, that's that's the Becker. quote we were looking at for, Becker, earlier right? in the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah that's, so that's the... Uh, that's the okay. Yeah, yeah. And, no, this and, is this is helpful. Yeah, like this is what I wanted to get. There's like, a lot. People don't realize how much lighting affects things. I mean, my house. <laughs> uh, my wife is always saying, "Oh, the lighting in here is great. Thank you." Yeah, <laughs> almost every day because I'll go and like I have Good things. I have things set up a certain way, yes. and most of the lighting in my house are actually mid-century lighting fixtures. Sure, there's no recessed lighting. Recessed yep. lighting is the worst thing you could put in your house. It's all down lighting. It's all straight it's down. It's all straight down. Yeah. And it doesn't it doesn't f- glow the room. It just shines down on the floor so you can see where you're going. Yeah. Instead of it creating a mood, you know, or creating a feel. So barring any specific I mean, your 45 degree thing is a, like it's a great a starting technical. point. It's no, a, but it's, it's a yeah. good starting yeah. point for people. But I, I think perhaps what I'm hearing from you, if we're going to give people advice is get your, well, get, get a, a, a a bar of lights, right? You can go to to shelve and and buy a bar fairly inexpensively yeah, Yeah. and then set it up in your house. Like your house is a stage or or your garage or whatever, wherever you can even outside at night. The trouble with that though, is you don't generally have a space. It needs to be a certain distance and a certain, You know, but, if you're going to buy lights for your band, be creative, especially if it's something you're and bringing. And take pictures of it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, that, that, yeah. that was where I was going to yeah, go with this, yeah. is experiment. Yeah. Try the things that, that Billy just suggested. Yeah. You know, 45 degrees down, 45 degrees on the side, 45 degrees yeah. underneath, or change the angles, yeah. change the location. Or use something different. Don't use stage lights. Use, yeah. use mid-century fixtures. Um, but take pictures yeah. and look at it. Don't don't use your phone. Use your use, phone that's light. what I mean. Just use. Yeah. Use your phone. Oh, yeah. You could use your phone as lighting. Yeah. I yeah, mean, it's, sure. that's the thing about yeah. lighting is you don't have to worry about the sound quality. <laughs> right. You know, right. The more I, this is the thing about going back to to four four while producing is it's for me, it was necessity. Yep. I right. Had, no, I, yeah, mother I know. Of invention. Yeah. yeah like yeah. necessity. Most of the time produces something great even if it's not viable sure. or sellable or whatever usually if you if you're forced to do something a certain way because you don't have the money right you don't have the resources no, I you come up with something really great and creative yeah i i it might, it might not be great great is subjective but yeah, ne- necessity right. necessity very often forces you to innovate and create something That's my point. you wouldn't have otherwise yes. thought to do. Right, exactly. So embrace that. Yeah. You know, go go get your four lights yeah. or get one light, whatever yeah. you have, and just experiment yeah. with where you can put it and think about, do you want your faces lit in your right. band? Because to your point, some yeah. bands just want to be backlit. Yes. And be silhouettes all night. Seen. And that's okay. Yep. To- totally fine. Yep. But don't do it. Let accidents happen. Yeah. But accept that even when an accident's happening, it can the be res- serendipitous. The resu- well, but the result of that is your show. Right. Right. Everything's the show. Just like whatever you happen to wear on stage, even if you didn't think about it, that was your costume for the night. You should think about it. Well, that's the thing is <laughs> that's what I'm trying to communicate is that there's a reason to stop and think about these things. Don't necessarily worry about what Billy would do or anybody else. Oh, right. oh there you go. Don't, don't hit your microphone. You're Just never. <laughs> I'm terrible at this game. Uh, I got it. I guess. I guess 19 years isn't long enough. I got to do it longer, Billy. I'll get there eventually. Um, bullheaded persistence is going to win the it's game. Like Italian gesture. It's, it, that's that you're doing. well. Normally, I'm in front of my like. I'm turned to the side for the most oh, part right, today. Oh, because I'm in here. I'm and, in the and I am right. set up so that I can Italian gesture, even though I'm not Italian. I, I live with many. Uh, I, I can Italian gesture and I'm fine. Right. This is why anytime Mike's somebody mics me on stage to like, go do a, a talk with like a lav. You gotta keep, keep it away from my hands. They're like, they're, they're like, Oh, we can just clip it on your thing and run it down your front. I'm like, no, no I'm running to give it, it to me yeah. and I'm running it down my, yeah. under my shirt right. because otherwise I'm going to break your microphone. <laughs> I'm going to rip this cord out. And they're like, really? I'm like, I, I'm just you're, telling you what I've drummer. learned. You think they would know. You'd think they would, You'd know. Think they would know. I know. But uh, but yeah, like experiment with it, learn what it does and be OK with choosing to do something that you think is going to be great and realizing you didn't like it. Like, well, that's think- OK. Don't get emotionally committed to past decisions. Just ex- look at it, take a picture of it 
And Wait. then decide, do you want that again or do you want something right. different? I think limitation Iterate. is your friend. Yes. You oh, know, it's, because it's- As much as like, if I had the uh, access to resources and money that some people that I know have, I, I would be dangerous. I would- Yeah. Like- Yeah, probably true, but only- I would, I would be say, dangerous in a way where I would make other people a lot of money. <laughs> right, but only you know? because- But you, I haven't, I don't have those resources to do that. So those limitations have made me- uh, be innovative in my own way. Yes. Whether it's innovative. Uh, but I think in those limitations world, are why you would currently now be very successful right. if given a huge budget. Right. Because you've, yes. you've learned I know all how, the cool things to do. I know how do. to work a budget. Co you know and how I know to. how things work. Exactly. You know? But if you were just given that budget right out of the gate, yeah, your 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 skills, <laughs> but I don't know that you would have developed the same. You no, wouldn't have would, developed the I same would, set of skills. Uh, yeah. You would have developed different skills, yes. maybe. Yeah, but it, I definitely. Uh, I, I'm now. I am. I'm grateful for the being for being poor, for having limitations, for um, having doors slammed in my face. Yeah, you know those things really brought me down. They stopped sure. me from wanting to do things. Yeah, even in, in recent times. Um, but then I have my wife uh, and my daughter and the people who care about me say, no, no, you're wrong. You need to keep doing keep what doing you're doing. Keep doing this. Yeah. Uh, and I think that, I mean, if I, I would say to a younger person, don't stop. Keep, keep going. Don't yeah. let anyone tell you you can't because you're going to live your life thinking that. Yeah. That you can't. Now, you might not be great at it, but so what? If right. it brings you joy and you bring joy to the world, what keep doing it. Listen to Lou Reed sing. Mm -hmm. It's a ter <laughs> terrible, terrible the, singer. The point is, is <laughs> we have put as a society, and I think this is worldwide at this point, we have put such a monetary value on everything. It's yeah. we, like we've politicized everything yep. and, and monetized everything. Everything. And it's nothing wrong with money. It's nothing wrong with making money. No. But there is something wrong with putting a, a, a dollar sign on something that brings you joy. You should just be able to do it without do it. thinking, I have to make money at this. Well, and, and where it, it gets where it gets tricky, and I can say this as someone who has taken the things that I love and figured out how to make career uh, you know well, that's different. It, it, yeah, career from yeah, them yeah. well but but there is that okay like you well, know not everybody do, can do that David. but doing a podcast or whatever right. uh, you know as an example or publishing a website as an example it's easy once you take this hobby and the, and the content or the help like i you right. know especially with with like mac geek i really and with this show yeah. I, like the point is to M m yes make us think but also provide like value yes. and help people yes. that, because that's well, providing what, a service I, that's what yeah. i like to do is right. i like to help people so i've taken this thing that i like to do and figured out a way to m make money sure. doing it but the hard part at times and the the skill i needed to develop was to figure out how to keep the two keep the two from influencing sure. each other, right? Like, cause it's really easy to say, oh, well, you know, I could take on these four sponsors and have them drive the content of every episode. But then you're compromising. That's the thing. And I know that eventually all of you would stop listening if I did that. Probably. Well, they stopped listening because I've been talking. I know but... they already stopped listening. That's why we can have this conversation. <laughs> it doesn't matter. But, but the same is true for music. Like you right. can, you know, do the thing you want. And then in parallel to that, figure out if, and there, and then how you right. can, make that something financially viable. And and the answer might be, it might not be something that can be, and that's okay. But if you can find a way to make it financially Which viable, is great. But the keep thing the, is, keep but your, this is the mentality is like, you have to be able to make money at this, but you don't, you don't because no. you spend all this money on video games. You spend all of this money on your lattes. Why not spend your money on making your art? Yep. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, especially if you can, if you can afford it's actually, it's actually better than getting lattes says the guy yeah. who doesn't drink coffee uh, yeah i don't drink coffee i mean i love lattes i know I love a good old milk latte i know uh but the point is <laughs> you you don't have it doesn't have to be capitalized not everything does no correct uh enough then, enough does so that you can keep doing I the things that you enjoy i love money i really like the stuff that you can buy with money but 
Yeah, I like the flexibility that money absolutely, affords me. but yeah. Again, limitations can be your friend. Oh, they are. You know, if you have unlimited funds, are you going to get anything done? Do you know what I mean? Like, I do know what you mean. No. Because uh, then no. it just becomes a slippery slope of just spending money and spending money. Now, I would love to be on that slippery slope, but unfortunately, I'm not. Yes, yeah, same. So it, I feel like it focuses me, especially- I don't know that you would love being on that slope. Mm, I probably would. I don't like rich people, so- <laughs> I would not. Wait a minute. I don't like myself. So. Oh, wait a minute. This yeah, might work out okay. Loathing. I, I would be a good billionaire. I would. I yeah. Would. You could, you could sort of be the, uh, the yeah. self-loathing billionaire. Like I actually, said you might not be you know, unique in that. Room. Dorothy Parker said it uh, best that I loathe most rich people, but I feel like I'd be really good at it. There you go. And I, I, I feel that's like. That's Billy I, Butler, ladies and gentlemen. I, I think I would be good at it. I think so too. Uh, I think you'd be great at it. <laughs> You're my nominee for, uh, for next, 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 billi- next billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> the trouble is I'd give it all away. That's that's what I, I'd end up doing. I, you say that this like that you say it like it's a bad thing. No, I don't say it like it's a bad thing. But you said the trouble is. Oh yeah. That's what you said. All right, well give me a billion bucks and let's see what happens. I'm willing to work for it. Sure. I mean, yeah. I just need a rich father. Okay. <laughs> Just don't look at me. I'm sorry. I'm getting political. I can't help it. Ugh. All right. He can't help it, folks. Thank you for listening. I hope that there were enough I hope there was informative something. nuggets here. In, a, in and, and maybe some of this was entertaining, too. Uh, but I, I know I, I go got some things out rails. of this. I'm sorry. Well, we always go off the rails. We do. It's what we do. Yeah. We didn't even get to the thing that was sort of the catalyst for oh, for, us yeah. for, of doing this. Billy... Do you want to tell him what the thing is? We'll do it in the next episode I have you on. Yeah, you tell him. It's, yeah. Okay. Billy wants me to teach him to fish, and that's fish with a pH. I don't want to be taught to fish. I understand. You want to be given the opportunity to fully learn about the band fish so that you can decide that you don't like them. I already don't. I understand yeah. this. Okay. They seem like nice guys. Don't well, get that, me wrong. I mean, that, but... that doesn't mean you have to like their music. We seem like, right. like jerks and bitter pill, and people love our music. So I, well, it's I am like... a jerk, but <laughs> I don't get fish right you want to get fish it right. doesn't mean you you need to like it i get the the cultiness of it yes you know, i don't mean that negative no no I, yeah. I totally know what you I, mean i totally get that it's like i get the dead yeah but i i even get like i like some of dead the dead's music sure uh, same but i'm not a deadhead and i same. wouldn't do that thing but i get that mentality and you you, you want to okay so this Community, is this is actually that. a great conversation because i'll think about now that i know and i know we've had this over the last several months in fact but right. now that that contextualizes a little better for yeah. me so i'll come up with the way yeah. and if any of you out there are fish fans and you want to help me You're probably not going to like what i have to say no 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 <laughs> that's what it, like my goal in this isn't to convince you to like fish i i i mean listen i used to i'm you know me i'm an apple guy i know um, I used to do a ton of Windows consulting for people. I used to be an Apple guy. Right. It, but like people would ask me, my Windows clients would ask like, how come, when are you going to try and get me to buy a Mac? Like right. is, it would be, there would be some version of that question fairly early on in the well, relationship. Well, to be fair, you know, Apple is Windows. I mean, it, it is. I don't even know what that means. So I'm not even going to well, Windows is that. a software, it's a platform. Yeah. And it's pretty much the same thing. Well, yeah. I mean, they copied from one another all the way yeah. up. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, it, but but people would ask me, like, when are you going to try and convince me to buy a Mac? And I'm be, I, my answer would always be the same. It'd be never. Never. Buy your own thing. And yeah. and I'm like, I'm here to support you. If there's something you're doing where I think you would be better off with a Mac, and I know in my head that that means the pain and friction of converting <laughs> Uh, it, then I will yeah. advise you, but yeah. otherwise I don't want to be the your thing. the one who yeah. caused you the pain. You've yeah. chosen this platform. I'm going to stick with it. So yeah, my, my, my goal in, in this teaching Billy about fish thing about, yes, yes. I, I know, but it sounds better when and I say I've gone teach out of Billy my way to fish to avoid everything I can. Right. Uh, but and, teaching and, you to fish would, is not about evangelizing them. It's about finding the things so that you understand it. That's all. Mm. And it's it's because you've asked. I we and yes, I think it it would make an interesting podcast. Right. Uh, a friend of mine does a podcast yeah. about Taylor Swift. Yeah. And he's not a Swift fan at all. Sure. I think he might be a little bit at this point. Well, he's been hard, doing it for a couple of years right. now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, but he, he 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 does the podcast with a friend who is one hundred percent a Swifty. Sure. And she's like. Super smart, yeah. knows, uh, just as a human being, but also like everything about Taylor Swift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's um, a fan. 
Chief, she's a huge Swifty. Sure. And that's kind of, I think, what we're going to yeah. try to do. Yeah, we'll do a you little know, segment Tomer, on who it. Who's also in Bitter Pill is also a huge Fish fan. Yep. And I, 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 I don't, I, I don't get it. Yeah. I don't get well, it. And and you may, we will get, we will make sure you have all the information to possibly get it. But there's, there's, I, I, you might not have an L, enough LSD. I don't see. I don't think it. I don't think drugs are the answer, Billy. No, not even nitrous. Definitely not nitrous. They, I mean, there's a lot of that after the shows. Oh, is it after they do it at the show? It's, yeah, the, the streets are littered with nitrous balloons. It's ridiculous. Because from what stupid. Tomer told me, it's you know, nobody in the show is doing nitrous. Okay. As far as I know, I don't know. But you know, you would you would see drugs. that. You would see that in the show. I I I, I don't. But not like not when I go see shows. Yeah. I I actually really like to be sober when I go Damn see right. shows. Yeah, really. I'm kind of the same. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, I can, I can, you know, drink on my couch or whatever. Yeah. But going to see shows, though, I, I did have to drink at other. the Lou Reed show. It was not good. I can, yeah, I can understand that once you've sort of like accepted that this is this not going to be what I want. I'll be at the bar. I'm going to go to the bar now. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to help f- sort of mitigate the terribleness of this scenario. But to me, that's the, like, I, yeah, I don't, I, I, I'd prefer yeah. to be sober and and remember the show and yeah. like, like engage with it. Well, we it's don't have a, a name for this podcast yet. Well, we'll do, do it as a segment on this. Oh, and do it. Okay. That's yeah. what I'm saying. We'll do it as a, you know, a segment of, of this show and we'll see how people like it. Yeah. And, All right. you know, yeah, yeah, that sort of thing. All right. I'm going to play the theme music now, Billy, because otherwise we'll never, ever stop. So the theme music's playing. You don't have headphones on, so you can't hear. But it's actually. Yeah, but you, don't you have to do the thing? Yeah. Well, you have to do the thing. Good. Well, always be prepared. Well, that's the Boy Scout motto oh, is, is always be prepared. What's the what's the Gig Gab motto? Always be eggs all the way through. Always be always beer performing. Always beer performing. That's the one. <laughs> I'm terrible. That's it. That's the end. Perfect. The I'm terrible. That's perfect. <laughs> Keep going. My, I'm moving away from from politics uh, yeah. um back to producing your own work having charisma sure i know plenty of people though that don't have that yep. but they get on stage and they can and perform. they're really good at what they do yes right whether it's playing an instrument or whether it's singing or acting or whatever it is yep. they just have that yep right and it's not a matter of them uh, having the charisma they just have the skills and the ability and the talent to do that. Yeah. You don't need the charisma to no, succeed you don't need to be with this a president to be able to do right. That. You don't. Ha- yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, success- and there's different versions of it. It's not binary right. that you have it all or none, right. but yeah. success is subjective. We know that. Yes. Um, but producing your own work is, is thankless because nobody thanks you because you're doing all the, you're, you're, you're driving the boat. Uh, and being able to do it is, uh, uh, privilege, but at the same time, and maybe we can go after the break, we can come back to it as, as why to produce your own work. All right, Gig Gab family, it is time for a tasty tune up for your meal game with our sponsor, Green Chef. Let's rock your kitchen. Picture this you're back from a gig, your stomach's growling louder than your amp. What do you do? You whip out a Green Chef box and turn your kitchen into a backstage buffet. Whether you're a keto keyboardist, a paleo percussionist, or a vegan vocalist, Green Chef has got your back with meals that are like a VIP pass to clean eating city. Say goodbye to the same old sad sandwiches. Green Chef delivers whole foods that'll have your body feeling like it just nailed a solo. It's not just food, it's fuel for your next encore. And hey, Who knew that gut health could rock so hard? Their new gut and brain health meal plan is like a headliner for your health. Each bite's a note that plays perfectly in tune with your body. Plus, as a working musician, who's got the time to hunt for organic, cage-free, or sustainably sourced goodies? Green Chef does the legwork so you can do the fretwork. And here's the kicker. Green Chef and HelloFresh jam together. More choices, more flavors. It's like having a world tour of tastes right at your fingertips. Switching between the brands is my secret chord progression to mealtime harmony. And now you can too with a sweet deal. You ready for the crescendo? Go to greenchef.com slash 60giggab and use code 60giggab to get 60% off 
plus 20% off your next two months. That's right, 60% off plus 20% off your next two months at greenchef.com slash 60 gig gab. Now go rock your meals with Green Chef and our thanks to Green Chef for sponsoring this episode. All right, um, I want to talk about running an original band, running a band in general. Sure. But, you know, you you certainly are the, whether you like it or not, the leader of Bitter Pill in that you, you are the- I have the, no issue with that. You are the, right. I mean, it's, <laughs> it, it's true. Yes. It, it's just how it, it's just how it is. Uh, you are not a dictator by no. any stretch of the imagination. Uh, no. nope. <laughs> in fact, you're one of the most collaborative people I've ever worked with. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I appreciate well, it, that. It's true. I work hard at it. That is is obvious. Yeah. 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 Because because I because you and I are we have a lot of similarities and being and we having, disagree wholeheartedly on many things. on some other things. Yes. Correct. Yeah. But we're but we're similar humans in that we have the tendency to be. Um, Resolute in our convictions. Absolutely. 100%. And that can make us control freaks. Yep. And so actively working not to be in a collaborative environment is, is like it, it, it's something you work on. It is a skill that can be developed. It it has to be developed. It's not just something you have to learn. You have to learn. Yes. You like, you have to learn. People have to teach you to hate. You have to learn to love. You have to learn to care. You have to learn to, you know, collaborate and, and you have to work with people who are willing to collaborate. Well, that too. Yes. Yeah. Otherwise you wind up being taken advantage of. At least yeah. I've found yeah. like if I, I have been taken I, advantage of, I can't even tell you how many times. Yeah. And it's because I'm a, a, too much of a collaborator. You, you're, you're actively collaborating when someone else is actively like just right. sucking that from you. Yep. So, uh, but leaving the, the negative part of, parts of this out and, and <laughs> focusing on the positive. No, you it's called bitter pill. I babe. get it. I know I'm in the band. I'm yes. aware. Yeah. Uh, but like keeping a band together is no small feat. Yeah. And especially with seven members now. Right. Yeah. And 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 Bitter Pill keeps growing. I know. <laughs> like <laughs> started out um with a four piece originally and stayed a four piece, but with no drums. And then, Well, yeah, yeah, you're talking about yeah. the, the Bitter Pill that started gigging because then because yeah. there was I mean, there was the first Bitter Pill thing which had a bunch of people in it well, that we all, did as a stage know, show was, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, it was kinda of, yeah, it was a stage yeah, it was a stage, a stage show. show. Yeah, for lack of a for lack of a better, better term, just had uh, yeah. performers and dancers yeah. and singers in it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it was still all my music. Right, and it was all yeah. All we were music, playing no no dialogue or anything. Right, there was no linear story. It was just no. It was vignettes. Songs. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. Vigne- it was essentially like live music videos. Yes, exactly. For, for yeah. again, for lack or of a better term, or going to see term. a band play twenty four songs with dancers and singers. dancers and, and yeah. it's the same thing. Yeah, uh, that's it's fair. theater. You know, it, it, well, um, that's yeah. So you, but it, trying to keep trying to herd, especially in original work, um, it's difficult. And especially at the level we're at, because we're kind of a lower tier um, level band when yep. it comes to commercial, right? And, and money. Money. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. and be, yeah. being commercially Funding. viable. Yeah. yeah. Like we can't get certain gigs because we don't have a big enough following. Right. And I have no issue with that at all. I would love a bigger following, but it takes time to cultivate that. Yep. And we're not building a commercial band. Right. And this goes back to what I was saying about producing your own work. What you, whether you're a band or whatever you're doing, it's going to take time to build an audience, to build your fan base. You can't expect to make money making art, <laughs> especially these days. Especially not in this not time. right out of the gate. Especially, no. oh, like, well, you never know, though. I mean, but that's the thing: things can catch fire, and all of a sudden, you and know, you, you're on the Grammys, yep. and you're winning Grammys, and you're touring the world. Yep. Uh, I always say overnight success takes about twenty years, and you're not. I mean, that's because you don't know, you know, it, look at somebody like Taylor Swift, yeah. you know, who had everything given to her, you know, a yeah. dad in the industry yeah. writing for these great stars at 14 years old. Um, but it took her 10 years to even get, with that, even with that, to yeah. get to the level at 24 years old where she was at 24, which is yeah. a pretty big level. Uh, yes. Even more now. Well, <laughs> like, way more now. Insane. But yeah. it still took her yeah. that time of working and developing. And it's the same thing with. Yeah, because she has, like, if you were to take a snapshot of Taylor Swift in in today's world, yeah, she there's enough there that resembles flash in the pan overnight success yep. that it would be easy if you didn't know the history right. to say, oh, this is going to be over in a year. Right. 
I don't think it's going to be over any. It yeah. could be though. But she like, cultivated her audience. But that's the difference. And she connected with her audience. Yes. Uh, and cares. Yep. She's not um, this egomaniac who is isolating themselves and abusing everybody around them. Yeah. You know, there's plenty of examples of that of uh, actors and musicians who do that, and yeah. now they're no nowhere. And now they, yep. But you may never get to any level as an artist. That's right. The point is to make art. And if you want to make money, go work at McDonald's. You'll make money at McDonald's. You will. You yes. get a great job yeah, at they, McDonald's. They guarantee your hourly rate even. Yeah. And <laughs> like a management's like $50,000 a year to start or something like that. Like Or more. Or yeah. more. Like go yeah. get a job there and make art. Yeah. You can do both. Yep. You know, the, there's this thing about you have to love what you do to pay your bills. Sure. And I just don't agree with that at all. Yep. Because artists, most artists I know don't make enough money to pay the bills with their art. Yep. And it, why would you want to compromise your art to make money, right? Yep. If it's not commercially viable, like, oh, I want to change how I do things. No, make what you're making. Go make money elsewhere. Yes. But don't expect when you four wall that venue, you rent that venue, bring your band there and three people show up. You can't expect that to, uh, you can't expect to sell out. Right. And even if you do Especially sell out. original work. Yeah, but even you know, if you do, you know, sell out or sell the venue, sell a gig well, well, now start thinking about what you learned so that you can do it for the next one. Right. Yeah. Right. And yeah. keep going. Keep making art. This, I yeah. mean. Well, okay. So it's that keep going part that I'm really, I, I want to like, I want to talk more about because right. it's tough keeping a band together. Yeah. And you have done something in Bitter Pill successfully that I would I, I'm certain, it, and I, I I probably kept quiet about this. Maybe I didn't. But when it was first proposed to have a sub fill in for a gig uh, for our original band, yeah. I was like, I, I did not. I was a <laughs> non-believer, and that's putting it kindly. Yeah. Right. Like I, I it, you know, it's like, it. oh, this is a stupid idea. We should just cancel the gig. It was. I think it was John, our yeah. guitar player, yeah. couldn't make it, and you're like, oh no. I got somebody else. It's going to yeah. be totally fine. It's like Jimmy's amazing. Jimmy Doherty's amazing. Oh my Jimmy, God. but I, and I would happily play and he's played yeah. with us several times, yeah. but that first and he's gig, not John. No, not at all. That's the thing yeah. is like, we, we put a successful version of our band out there that I was happy to stand behind. Right. Once I knew I had no confidence yeah. going in. I mean, it was like, I'm going to do the gig. I'm not going to like pull a diva that thing a and not show up. Too, and that like, was also yeah. a weird gig. It was this private party, yeah. but he's played some public gigs with us too. Yep. And he's yes, fantastic yep. and yes. he fits. But like the idea of having a sub in, in any band is controversial for, you know, for as a term of me. efficiency, but an it's original band, it's weird to me. I mean, I get it on the, like the highest levels because there's millions of dollars involved. Yes. There's, you know, corporate involved. In yeah, all insurance of companies insurance, say you have yeah. to go do this. You have to do it. Like, <laughs> yeah. And yeah, you yeah, have yeah. contracts and blah, yes. blah, blah. Yes. But like, it's just music, man. It's not some sacred cow. Yeah. You know, I, and I've something that I've realized recently, like, you know, it's, 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 it's just art. Yep. Like, yeah, it's not the original. It's not John McCormick, our, our amazing. Yeah. My 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 mate, my my man, my my friend, my, right? You know, cohort, my co-writer, my creator, like it's mine, 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 mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, uh, at the same time, like this is the way I look at it. No one is indispensable. Fair. Everyone's replaceable. A hundred percent. And why can't that be within a, a, an artistic endeavor like Bitter Pill? As long as we can, and you and we do like Bitter Pill. Our audience under our audience trusts that what we put on stage as bitter pill is going to be entertaining. I, yeah. I was going to say good, but that's that's such a subjective term. I hope it's and good. Entertaining is also subjective, but but it's different than just good, right? right? Like they know that our goal is to go entertain. Our my goal is to connect. C connect, sure. Which to me is a little deeper than entertaining. Yeah, it is. Because entertaining is kind of like talent. Like it's, yeah, it's a, yeah, kind of a vague word. But we're, it, but connecting just, is yeah. is that thing. Yeah. Is it, whatever we put on stage is going to connect. Yeah. It's going to entertain. It's yeah. going to it's going to give you an audience member something to do for a couple of hours that right. you're going to be happy you chose to do. Right. Like that. That's the thing. Or you're going to think about it. Or it's going to be a thing. For Whatever. You. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. And and our audience trusts that. 
and and obviously he's been fine when we've had Jimmy. In fact, I've had people come up to us and say, gosh, you know, when I saw John wasn't here, I was a little surprised. But yep. wow, like this was great. Yep. And it's like, yep. But you knew that we could do that. Yeah. I did not know yeah. that we could do that. And and I and part of that's informed by having had subs in different other bands that I've played in. And it's always like, not always, but yeah. sometimes it's like, oh, like, let's just get to the end, please. Well, you, you know, know, a lot of times these things are personality based. I, I think I, maybe they're often always. I mean, again, I table stakes is. I don't want to play that game, that personality game. I want to make right. art. I want to create. Yep. I want to make music. Uh, and I, I, I want it to not just be entertaining. Uh, and I don't, I, I don't want it to just make people happy. I want to make people mad. I want to make people hate me. I want people to, to love me. I want, yeah. I want all of that because that's the point to me of making art is to move people, is to to have people feel something. Yep. You know, uh, a lot of people say that you know. I go to these things so I don't have to think. I don't have to do anything. I can escape. When in reality, it's the opposite. You are actually reconnecting yeah. with who you are as a human being. Well, I think it's. I think both of those things are true. It's they're, they're saying I, I I don't want to think about the things I usually think about. Right. I want to escape from the things I'm usually trapped in or or right. it, like stuck in. And the way to do that is to give yourself something else to immerse yourself in, which right. is... Well, to remind you that why you're a human being. Well, that, and that hopefully that... your that. life isn't just your job. Right. That your life isn't just the bills that you have to pay. Yeah. That your life is actually has deep meaning. People love you. People care about you. Yeah. You know... So, um, but that escape... I mean, I always say that, you know, uh, reading music, like playing a musical, especially right. a complex one where right. I really have to like, or one that I don't know, which right. therefore is complex if I'm sight reading it, right? <laughs> yeah, Even bet. if it's super simple, yeah. it's like, don't screw it up, Dave. <laughs> like, we're all counting on don't you. Don't let them know you're screwing Don't up. let them know. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. But yeah. that, I love that. And I think of that as an escape. Now, it is not, like, I'm not not thinking I'm only thinking about playing that part. I yeah. can't possibly think about. Oh, you have to focus on the moment. What's going to be on? What's going to be for dinner? What was going on at the no, office? You're in the moment. You're this in is a, the moment. This is a theater that's thing. That's what we. This is a. This is what actors do. You have to be in the moment at every single moment. Yes. And know what's coming. That too. You got to do both. Focusing on that, but you have to focus in on the moment and play the truth of the moment. Yep. Because otherwise, the audience is not going to be there with you. Right. So if you're on stage and you're playing and you're in a song and you're not in the moment of that song, people will know yes. that you've disconnected and that you're, uh, even you're if you're it highly in. skilled, you're you're phoning it in and people will know, even yeah. if you're not like really showing that you're phoning it in. And you know? that, this is interesting because I was going to ask you about like the, the, you know, the vision of, of how you, how you approach bitter pill, but you just, you just explained that. Yeah. Like, that, and I know it's not unique to Bitter Pill for you. You do this with pretty much everything you yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I tell you, playing music, especially your own music, is completely different than anything, any theater, any acting, any of oh, that. Oh, uh, agreed. I mean, there's similar. there are similar, similar elements, But of when course. I'm in the moment, it yeah. is, it is uh, for me, it's it's like a meditative state. Yeah. Uh, and that I'm uh, connecting to whatever it is on another level. Yep that I don't experience in any other way. Same. It's, yeah. it's religious. It's, you know, no, being on stage is spiritual. Is, it's all of that is, is the, the, the closest thing I could come in my life to describing religious moments. Yeah. Yeah. When it's the right moment, there are yeah. times I've been on stage when it's like, I can't, wait Oh, to I can't get wait out to get here. off. Yeah. 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 And I can't it, wait it, to like, drink. that's going to happen. Right. Yeah. Like, oh, wait, wait, I have a drink right here. Yeah. Like <laughs> what's on TV over there. Yeah. I'm watching the hockey game, yeah. you know, at the bar or whatever. Like, that, like certainly I've experienced that, but, but when it's right, yeah. it's awesome. Yeah. And I think that's why everybody listening who plays, and I know not everybody who listens plays and that's great, but everybody who listens, who plays like, that's probably a part of why we choose to do this thing. Well, and I tell you, audiences have come up to me and said, you guys are so great. I, you know, I'm such a fan, sure. but it's so obvious how much you love playing <laughs> and how much you all love each other. Yep. And it's it, it's so much fun to watch. They're like, it's more than just music. And I know. I'm like, absolutely. That, and I think it's that- the, It's funny because every one of us 
Except maybe John. He's like he can be a curmudgeon, but he he no, doesn't like he to be. He has so much love. That's the he thing. Is, he's he is, he's such a good person. He is such a softy. He puts on this like I know this veneer sometimes. Sometimes most but, of the time he's very. But very most good. of the rest of us in the band are curmudgeonly and and can be yeah. like Mike is bitter. definitely yeah the curmudgeon of we, the band. But we yeah. can be bitter and and Absolutely. and sarcastic and and all of those sort of negative things. But when we put Bitter Pill on stage, yeah, the, well, it's cathartic it's, too. It, yeah, the, the only thing we can communicate is joy. It's yeah. like it's even the like, weirdest. Thing. I mean, I, I write these like terrible, yeah, depressing, uh, <laughs> uh, political, all these like just deep dark songs, but they're fun. They are fun. Yeah, one That's of our new songs that it. I I think you heard. Actually, we've been in writing sessions. You yeah, so they, yeah, there have been writing sessions. Yeah, it's just three of us. Me and Emily and John are writing yeah. together. But I, I want to hear about this. This is like inside baseball now, folks. Oh, sure, Because yeah. Billy and I haven't talked since the latest writing session. a song called Hate. I've heard Hate. I <laughs> yes, remember. We have. played it a little a bit. A little bit. Yeah. We got it down now. Okay, and cool. It's, <laughs> I, I want to name the next record Hate. <laughs> of course. Just because. You heard it here first. Just because it's so appropriate. It is. Especially the time we're living in. And the song is. Oh, you know what? The album cover should be. Could be. Oh, sure. I, 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 yeah, I, I no. dislike the word should. That's why. Well, so that's why I, I corrected care. myself. Yeah. That's just a me doesn't thing. mean it's going to happen. No, no, no. <laughs> but it could be like the word hate in the sky yeah. and a pool of water below it and reflected in the same font at the same size, yeah. the word joy. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. see? Yeah. 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 I don't know. Like, like, no, these I'm, are in. Th- I'm in. Crazy ideas. Yeah, but yeah, it's yeah, ironic. Yeah. Yes. It's the irony of it. The That's why I like it. to do that for the album cover so that we can help people get over the, no, 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 we under, we yeah. get it. And like, I think that song's not a great example of it, but because <laughs> it, it's, I think it's, I think it's obvious that the song's ironic. When you hear it, you'll, yeah, of course. Yeah. But there are songs like Khan is not ironic. Nope. Calm it's a good very, song. Thank you. And it, if people, but if people, I guarantee you, there are some people, perhaps a lot of people who don't listen very closely to the lyrics and just enjoy the catchy little dun, 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 yeah. right. And they're into yeah. it and they, and then there's this rap section, which is yeah. kind of cool and that's great. And they, yeah, they might what's not, saying, what's being said, they may not be paying attention <laughs> well, and too is, closely. And I, I made it, I wrote it specifically to be on the nosy, but which nosy? Yep, I know. Though, if you really sit down and look at it, you're like, "Oh, it's pretty obvious." I, I, yeah, who, I know which way it goes, <laughs> right? But it could go. It, and you it could, has. Yep. And it has. I've had you know, magas come up to me like, "Yeah, that song." I'm like, mm, "That song doesn't mean what you think it means." But to them, it does. And that's why I love it. Yep. Because they connected with it. Yep. Uh, and it speaks to them. Unfortunately. It's not the right way. <laughs> it's not your way. It's, it's not, not my, the intended no, way. Exactly right. It's not the intended way. But, but that's the, the thing. Time, Once you put music out there, that's it, what I wanted, and yeah. I, I want to be able to connect with people who yes. I disagree with. Yes. Uh, and maybe they'll hear my side, but from, and it's not a matter of my side. It's just my opinion, right? In a poetic way. Well, it's, it, yeah. I really try to avoid being too on the nosy with things because it alienates people, and I. That's the thing that amazes me is, and I said earlier, you are someone who is good at combining your poli- your your politics, like, yeah. your, well, your yeah. partisan politics yep. with your music in a way that I'm sure it alienates some people. I'm but sure it does. Whatever, but yeah. not like not so much that it's alienating anyone out out there specifically, specifically, right? right? And I don't. And, but and not I, everybody's good at this. No, and I try not to do that in like my regular life with my the people I know that I don't yeah, agree with politically. Sure, because um, it's just toxic and doesn't get anything done. My my advice to musicians out there is if if you already have developed this skill, great, th- you're you're fine. Yeah. If you want to develop this skill, that's great. But make sure you develop it before you bring it on stage. What drives yeah. me nuts yeah. are people who are not who don't have this skill, and then. S- gain an audience and yeah. then and this is true of podcasters too and this is why you will never hear me talk about politics on right. a, any of my shows a, a it's an escape for my listeners but that escape from from having to listen to politics partisan politics it, to partisan politics yeah. yeah is uh is a byproduct of me not being good at combining the the thing that yeah. i am good yeah. at with that so guess what i don't do I, it and i always say put it in the art 
Yes. Put it in the art. Put it in your work. Yes. Let your work speak. But for this you. is my work. I know. I know you you but, know what I'm saying? Like, but I you can't but, be too on the nosy with it. You can't be too on the nosy with it. That's what your gig is. Unless that's your work. Right. Right. There are podcasts that I listen to that are specifically oh. about certain types of politics. Of course. And, you know, I'm usually rah, rah, rah. Uh, but I'm also not 100% in anyone's pool. Sure. So, yeah. Yeah. But the last thing, even. People that are, in my opinion, uh, I don't. I don't want to. Um, then I'm. Then don't, because yeah, I'm going to get you, you back know, to the bitter pill writing stuff. Like what? What else? Yeah. You said that there. How many new songs have have you guys come There's up? There's a lot. Great. It's a lot. Oh, I'm excited. We have at least a records worth. I mean, we oh. have. Yeah, we've already had two or yeah. three records worth of music. Yeah, but yeah, it's yeah, a matter yeah. of like what we're going to pick. Yeah. Um, but there's good stuff coming. There, I think. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Uh, John's got. Do we get to hear any? Do I get to hear any demos before we yeah, like we're play them together? Soon. Okay, great. Because um, I'd love to come into that next rehearsal. I with... just think Emily is is really coming to her own oh, good. as a songwriter. I mean, she already had, but like leveled. She leveled just, up. Yeah, Emily is uh, Emily's is my daughter, but Billy's she's daughter, also lead but she's singer. Lead singer and, yeah, she's gonna be twenty nine huh? a month. I'm, I'm sure she's really glad that you told everybody that. She didn't care. Okay, great. No. Yeah. She uh, um, have you met my family? We don't I really have. care about that. Stuff. Yeah, no, yeah. I, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but it's you it, said some new covers coming. Yes. What are the new covers if, coming? You know, the funny thing about Emily's songwriting, the difference between our writing styles is she's very. I mean, there's so many. I could tell you so many differences well, between your writing styles. Specifically, yeah. mine is political, usually socio topic. Yeah. Topical. Yeah. That's um, where you draw your inspiration yeah, from. Yeah. That's yep. generally where I draw my inspiration from. Yep. Uh, Emily draws hers from emotionally. Yes. Uh, and because uh, she's so, such a deeply em empathetic person. Yeah. Uh, and her experiences too. She's worked with um, dementia patients. Right. Uh, the elderly um, in hospice. Now she works um, with uh, an organization to help homeless teens get into homes. Uh, into apartments. So, <laughs> yep. you know, what do I do? I, I make art. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> like, that's pretty much all I do. Uh, and I, you know, I do production work and da, da, da. Yeah. But I, I have empathy. I know you do. <laughs> I'm aware. Yeah. I'm but aware. But two different writing styles. And then we have John, uh, who writes, who's another deeply emotional, yes. uh, deeply, uh, not emotional, but uh, empathetic human being. Um, and his politics are kind of super subtle. Oh yeah, you know yeah. when it comes to his writing, but most of his writing is is human based. Yep, right. Yeah, he he is good at that yeah. sort of connection with with the everyman. If every you will. man, yeah, absolutely. Because yep. uh, he's an he's an everyman. He is. You know, he's yes. he worked in sales for twenty five years, yeah. and now he works. Uh, he's uh, also in sales. real estate. Yeah. I mean, no, he <laughs> yeah, worked but like, different sales. No, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Ad sales. Yep. Uh, uh, yep. And he's been a professional musician his whole life. So yep. it, all of that combined, yeah. he just has a really interesting perspective. Yeah. Wow, cool. I'm yeah. excited to hear these songs. So that, that's so three what are, different what are the covers? perspectives. Uh, one is a uh, uh, Betsy Hutton, I think her name was. Okay. Um, she wrote this song, Your, Your uh, Murder, Love Love is Murder or something. Oh, uh, I'll look it up. I yeah, got Emily it. sent yeah. me a, a version of murder, it. Murder, He Says? Murder, he says. I think it was, was I right about the name? Betsy? Betsy Hutton. Be Betsy yep. Hutton. Betty. Betty, Betty Hutton. Hutton. Betty Hutton. It's yep. funny because we have that song, Murder, Betty says. the Stripper. I know, yeah. <laughs> um, it's a sad story with Betty Hutton. Oh, such a sad story. Um, but Emily sent me this uh, uh, Great. version of her singing it with the ukulele just on the phone. I'm sure, like, sure. Oh, my God. This is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> like, she doesn't, she's going to hate, if she, maybe she won't listen to this, but. Uh, um, she hates when I say, you know, how amazing she is. Sure. Because uh, she's- Proud Papa. But also- But also like- it's, it, Like, I, I don't disagree with you. Yeah. Yeah. I, like, I, in fact, I, that's the wrong way to say it. I yeah. wholeheartedly agree with yeah. you. Yeah. Like she sent me this, just yeah. this phone recording. I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. Like, yeah. do you, like I just want to play for people. Like, he listened to this. Listen just, to, just this. This Here is you go. one of the best singing yep. artists in the world right now. And like, nobody knows who she is. Yep. What? Ten people know. Yeah, yeah. Right? Know, we got like uh, 7,000 Facebook followers. It's fine. Yeah. I mean, we have- no, we have like an audience. Saying, yeah, we, we actually do. do. Yeah. It, like, it, but yeah. she is- She's just yeah. ridiculous. And I, it's not just the proud papa. I know talent. Yeah, I know. I know it. I just- yeah. I know. Yeah. Um, there is another Tom Waits cover she wants to do. Um, <laughs> of course. I can't remember which one it was. All right. Um, I have a couple of covers I want to do. What, what's one of them? Name one. Uh, then I have a question I want to ask before we have I to wrap up. I can't think it off the top of my okay. head. 
Then I have a, I, have, I, I, I actually have a, have a list of about 150. Well, I mean, right. I do, but. We, yeah, we have a Slack channel full of them. Yes, so we do. Eventually, we eventually will, we might we will not mine that. that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you mentioned earlier, just to set this up a little bit for folks, that you, in addition to being a performer and a writer in both theater and musical endeavors, you also understand, and I'm understating it here sound and lighting mm-hmm. and all of those things you yep. worked as a professional sound engineer yep. you have worked as a professional lighting designer I was doing lighting this morning well that's yep. that so we can talk about sound but we've we're we're know, testing people's patience yeah no but i like i i want to i want to talk about sound at some point with you because you yeah. and i i think we have a lot that we can talk about so we'll we'll sure. make that sort of the primary topic Gear the next gap. time you're on yeah sound exactly gap. Sound gab, yeah. yeah. But I want to do a, a little bit at least right here with light gab because you do really understand lighting. Mm-hmm. You, I mean, it's it's something that not only interests you, but you actually have developed skill yes. with. Yeah. So for bands out there who are saying, okay, I've been listening to gig gab for almost nine years and I, yes, I'm on board. Music is a visual art. I agree. I know my band needs to look good on stage, and part of that it involves how we present ourselves and how we dress and all of those things. Or you can look bad. Or you can look, but you like have to glar, you know, like, right? Acknowledge that whatever you bring on stage is your costume, right? And it could be a t-shirt and cargo shorts. That's fine. Just know that whatever you're wearing is. So why are you wearing why, those cargo shorts? Right, right. That's the the why. Is that part of who you are? If it is, is it part great. of the character you're developing for well, how you do shows? It is to the audience yeah. whether you think it is or not, yeah. right? But let it, and that's a great conversation yeah. to have too. Uh because everything you wear on stage is your costume. Yeah. Yep. Let's talk about lights. What's if a band has to it has has so nothing hard with a band. What's the what's the first thing a band should think about lighting uh, in terms of like getting? Like should they be right. worried about well, if you're four walling it, then you need, you know. No, but like for know. a band that's playing clubs, like that maybe have enough light to keep you from stumbling on stage. Right. What's the first thing a band, and even if even if they a club has lighting, like where should you be aiming the lights? What what right. what are what are sort of the basics that somebody can do going in? Oh my God, it's such a. I know. We'll, we'll start huge, with this, and no, then we'll I have get, you yeah. back on. Yeah, the yeah, trouble yeah. is, is you go into these clubs and they have their own gear, and I their know. own people, and they don't want you touching their stuff. Let's um, say they let you touch their stuff, yeah. right? Or it's your stuff. It like, depends on what your band is and what okay. what mood and all of that. Yep. Uh, do you want to be seen? Some bands hide behind uh, darkness. You know, some bands use a projector yep. to light them. And oh. uh, so you're projecting on bodies. Yeah. And you're seeing an image on that person's body, which I think is super cool. That's cool. Something I want to do. can be a thing. That'd right? be great Something for I us. Do. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there are fundamentals in lighting, but let's talk. Let's, you know, let's angles and wattages yeah. and well, fixtures. Let, and, let me, let me, let me zoom us out a little bit more. Yeah. Um, for a band that wants a to be seen on a stage that doesn't just look like it has, you know, your um, the the spotlight that you were going to hang in the, or the the can that you were going to hang in the garage, right? right. Like work a band that wants that. to look one <laughs> stage beyond work lights, right. which again could be a shtick, right? right? Like, and I've seen. Well, bands that's what do I'm saying. Lights. This yeah. comes down to the why. Like, what are you Fair. trying to get across? What do you? You know what? Yeah, you the lighting uh, changes the look of something simply by moving it to a different angle. So if you're using oh. one light, right? Yep. The place you want to do it, uh, you know, technically is a yes. 45 degree angle, pointing at you. Pointing. So in way, front of the performer, right, 40, 45, 45 degree, degree angle. angle. Got it. So it covers your your uh, your body or whatever yep. it is, but it also it's about the shadows on your face. You know, at a 45 degree angle, you don't get the shadows that you generally would get. Yep. Right. You move it up a little bit, oh. you start getting shadows underneath your yes. eyes. Right. Yes. And your eyes yes. begin to dis- disappear. Uh, you get shadows under your nose. Yep. Uh, with that one light, we're talking specifically. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah, start yeah. moving it down. Now it changes if it's at a 90 degree angle pointed at your face. Right. Yep. Now you're kind of washed out because oh. it's completely, it's covering up it's all everything. the shadows, all the there, natural there's no shadows depth. you get. You're, right. you're two dimensional yep. at that point. Oh. Move it down lower. Now you're getting shadows up on your, your forehead. Yep. And you're looking up your nose, but it also 
creates a, a bigger than life thing. Right. You know, I love Footlights. Yep. You know, uh, I've done shows where uh, theater and music where it's just Footlights. Yep. And it creates a certain type of mood and yeah. a certain type of look. Um, so, like, if a band is, is wanted to get a couple of lights and they want to create, like, something moody, just get a couple of work lights. You can get, you can get yeah. them now that with an app that changes the color. Sure. And just put them on the floor and point them up. Yep. You know, or have them come in from the side. Creates a whole other mood. Um, these are things that take a little bit of skill you experiment. and learning, yeah. right? And YouTube is your friend. What, what was the thing? Oh, the, the quote is, try again, fail again, fail better. Yes. That, that's that's the quote we were looking at for, back earlier right? in the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah that's, so that's the... Uh, that's the okay. Yeah, yeah. And, no, this and, is this is helpful. Like yeah, this is what I wanted to get. There's like, a lot. People don't realize how much lighting affects things. I mean, my house. <laughs> uh, my wife is always saying, "Oh, the lighting in here is great. Thank you." Yeah, <laughs> almost every day because I'll go and like I have Do things. I have things set up a certain way, yes. and most of the lighting in my house are actually mid-century lighting fixtures. Sure, there's no recessed lighting. Recessed yep. lighting is the worst thing you could put in your house. Because it's all down lighting. It's all straight it's down. All straight down. Yeah, and it doesn't it doesn't f- glow the room. It just shines down on the floor so you can see where you're going. Yeah. Instead of it creating a mood, you know, or creating a feel. So, barring any specific, I mean, your 45 degree thing is a, like it's a great it's a starting point. Thing. No, it's but a, it's a yeah. good starting yeah. point for people. But I, I think. Perhaps what I'm hearing from you, if we're going to give people advice, is Oof, get yeah. your well get get a, a a bar of lights, right? You can go to yeah. to Shelve and and buy a bar fairly inexpensively, yeah. yeah, and then set it up in your house, like your house is a stage or, sure. or your garage or yeah. whatever, wherever you can, even outside at night. The like, trouble with that though is you don't generally have a space. It needs to be a certain distance and a certain. Yeah. You know, but, if you're going to buy lights for your band, be creative, especially if it's something you're and bringing. And take pictures of it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, that, that, yeah. that was where I was going to yeah, go with this, yeah. is experiment. Yeah. Try the things that, that Billy just suggested. Yeah. You know, 45 degrees down, 45 degrees on the side, 45 degrees yeah. underneath, or change the angles, yeah. change the location. Or use something different. Don't use stage lights. Use, yeah. use mid-century fixtures. Um, but take pictures yeah. and look at it. Don't don't use your phone. Use your use, phone. That's light. what I mean. Just use. Yeah, use your phone. Oh yeah, you could use your phone as lighting. Yeah, I yeah, mean, it's, sure. that's the thing about yeah. lighting is you don't have to worry about the sound quality. <laughs> right. You know. Right. The more I, this is the thing about going back to to four four while producing is it's for me it was necessity. Yep. I right. Had, no, I it's yeah, the I know. Mother of invention. Yeah. yeah like yeah. necessity, most of the time produces something great even if it's not viable sure. or sellable or whatever usually if you if you're forced to do something a certain way because you don't have the money right you don't have the resources no, I wouldn't. you come up with something really great and creative yeah i i it might, it might not be great great ah. is subjective but yeah, ne- necessity right. necessity very often forces you to innovate and create something That's my point. you wouldn't have otherwise yes. thought to do. Right, exactly. So embrace that. Yeah. You know, go go get your four lights yeah. or get one light, whatever yeah. you have, and just experiment with where you can put it and think about, do you want your faces lit in your right. band? Because to your point, some yeah. bands just want to be backlit. Yes. And be silhouettes all night. Seen. And that's okay. Yep. T- totally fine. Yep. But don't do it. Let accidents happen. Yeah. But accept that even when an accident's happening, it can the be res- serendipitous. The resu- well, but the result of that is your show. Right. Right. Everything's the show. Just like whatever you happen to wear on stage, even if you didn't think about it, that was your costume for the night. You should think about it. Well, that's the thing <laughs> is that's what I'm trying to communicate is that there's a reason to stop and think about these things. Don't necessarily worry about what Billy would do or anybody else. Oh, right. well, there you go. Don't, don't hit your microphone. Just never. Podcaster. I'm terrible at this game. <laughs> uh, they, I got it. I guess. I guess 19 years isn't long enough. I got to do it longer, Billy. But I'll get there eventually. <laughs> um, bullheaded persistence is going to win the it's game. Like Italian gesture. It, that that's you're doing. well. Normally, I'm in front of my like. I'm turned to the side for the most oh, part right, today. Oh, because I'm in here. I'm and, in the studio. And I am right. set up so that I can Italian gesture, even though I'm not Italian. I, I live with many. Uh, I, I can Italian gesture and I'm fine. Right. This is why anytime Mike's somebody mics me on stage to like, go do a, a talk with like a lav, 
You gotta they're, keep keep it away from my hands. They're like, they're, they're like, oh, we can just clip it on your thing and run it down your front. I'm like, no, no I'm running. To give it, it to me, yeah. and I'm running it down my yeah. under my shirt right. because otherwise, I'm gonna break your microphone. <laughs> I'm gonna rip this cord out. And they're like, really? I'm like, I, I'm just you're telling a, you what I've learned. You think they would know? You'd think they would You'd know. Think they would. Know. I know. But uh, but yeah, like experiment with it. Learn what it does, and be okay with choosing to do something that you think is going to be great and realizing you didn't like it like well, th- that's think- okay don't get emotionally committed to past decisions just ex- look at it take a picture of it and what? then decide do you want that again or do you want right. something different i think limitation Iterate. is your friend yes you oh, know, it's, because it's as much as like if i had the uh access to resources and money that some people that i know have i, I would be dangerous i would yeah, like yeah, probably true. But only I would, I would be dangerous say, in a way where I would make other people a lot of money, <laughs> right? But only you know? because. But you, I haven't. I don't have those resources to do that. So those limitations have made me uh, be innovative in my own way. Yes, whether it's innovative. Uh, but I think in those limitations are why you would currently now be very successful right. if given a huge budget. Right. Because you've, yes. you've learned I all how, the cool things to do. I know how do. to work a budget. Co- you know and how I know to, how things work. Exactly. You know. But if you were just given that budget right out of the gate, yeah, uh, your, I your, spent your, your skills, <laughs> but I don't know that you would have developed the same, you no, wouldn't I have would, developed the I same would, set of skills. Uh, you yeah. would have developed different skills, yes. maybe. Yeah. But it, I definitely, uh, I, I'm now I am, I'm grateful for the, being for being poor, for having limitations, for um, having doors slammed in my face. Yeah, you know those things really brought me down. They stopped sure. me from wanting to do things. Yeah, even in, in recent times. Um, but then I have my wife uh, and my daughter, and the people who care about me say, "No, no, you're wrong. You need to keep doing keep what doing you're doing." This. Yeah, uh, and I think that. I mean, if I, I would say to a younger person, don't stop, keep, keep going. Don't yeah. let anyone tell you, you can't because you're going to live your life thinking that, yeah. that you can't. Now you might not be great at it, but so what? If right. it brings you joy and you bring joy to the world, what, keep doing it. Listen to Lou Reed sing. Mm-hmm. It's a ter- <laughs> terrible, terrible the, singer. The point is, is <laughs> we have put as a society, and I think this is worldwide at this point, we have put such a monetary value on everything. It's yeah. we, like we've politicized everything yep. and and monetized everything. And it's nothing wrong with money. There's nothing wrong with making money. No. But there is something wrong with putting a, a, a dollar sign on something that brings you joy. You should just be able to do it without do it. thinking I have to make money at this. Well, and and where it it gets where it gets tricky, and I can say this as someone who has taken the things that I love and figured out how to make career, you know, well, that's different. It, it, yeah, career from yeah, them. Yeah. Well, but but there is that okay, like you well, know, not everybody do, can do that. Dave. But doing a podcast or whatever, right. uh, you know, as an example, or publishing a website as an example. It's easy once you take this hobby and the, and the content or the help, like I, you right. know, especially with with like Matt Geekab, I really and even with this show, yeah. I, like the point is to m- m- yes, make us think, but also provide like value yes. and help people. Yes. That, because well, that's you're providing what, a service. I, that's what yeah. I like to do is right. I like to help people. So I've taken this thing that I like to do and figured out a way to m- make money sure. doing it, but. The hard part at times and the the skill I needed to develop was to figure out how to keep the two, keep the two from influencing sure. each other. Right. Like, cause it's really easy to say, oh, well, you know, I could take on these four sponsors and have them drive the content of every episode. But then you're compromising. That's the thing. And I know that eventually all of you would stop listening if I did that. Probably. Well, they stopped listening because I've been talking. I know. But- they already stopped listening. That's why we can have this conversation. <laughs> it doesn't matter. But but the same is true for music. Like you right. can, you know, do the thing you want and then in parallel to that, figure out if and there and then how you right. can m- make that something financially viable. And and the answer might be it might not be something that can be. And that's OK. 
But if you can find a way to make it financially viable, which is great, but the thing is, keep your. This is the mentality: is like you have to be able to make money at this, but you don't. You don't because you spend all this money on video games, you spend all of this money on your lattes. Why not spend your money on making your art? Yep, there's nothing wrong with that, Uh, especially if you if you can afford. It's It's actually better than getting lattes. Says the guy yeah. who doesn't drink coffee. Uh, yeah. I don't drink coffee. I mean, I love lattes. I know. I love a good oat milk latte. I know. Uh, but the point is, <laughs> you you don't have, it doesn't have to be capitalized. Not everything does. No. Correct. Uh, and enough, it, enough does so that you can keep doing I the things that you enjoy. I love money. I really like the stuff that you can buy with money. But yeah, I like the flexibility that money absolutely, affords me. But yeah. Again, limitations could be your friend. Oh, they are. You know, if you have unlimited funds, are you going to get anything done? Do you know what I mean? I do know what you mean. No. uh, Because then it just becomes a slippery slope of just spending money and spending money. Now, I would love to be on that slippery slope, but unfortunately, I'm not. Yeah, same. So it, I feel like it focuses me, especially- I don't know that you would love being on that slope. Mm, I probably would. I don't like rich people, so- (laughs) I would not. Wait a minute. I don't like myself. So. Oh, wait a minute. This yeah, might work out okay. Loathing. I, I would be a good billionaire. I would. I yeah, would. you could. You could sort of be the uh, the yeah. self loathing billionaire. Like I actually, said earlier, you might not be. You know, unique in that. Room. Dorothy Parker said it uh, best that I loathe most rich people, but I feel like I'd be really good at it. There you go. And I, I, I feel that's like Billy Butler, ladies and gentlemen. I, I think I would be good at it. I think so too. Uh, I think you'd be great at it. <laughs> You're my nominee for uh, f- for next next, billi- next billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> the trouble is, I'd give it all away. That's that's what I, I'd end up I, doing. Uh, you say that this like that. You say it like it's a bad thing. No, I don't say it like it's a bad thing. But you said the trouble is. Oh yeah, that's what you said. All right, well, give me a billion bucks and let's see what happens. I'm willing to work for it. Sure. I mean, yeah. I just need a rich father. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just don't look at me. I'm sorry. I'm getting political. I can't help it. <laughs> all right, he can't help it, folks. Thank you for listening. I hope that there were enough I hope there was informative <laughs> nuggets here in, a, in and and maybe some of this was entertaining too. Uh, but I I know I, I got go some things out rails. of this. I'm sorry. But well, we always go off the rails. We do. It's what we do. Yeah. We didn't even get to the thing that was sort of the catalyst for, oh, for us yeah. for, of doing this. Billy, do you want to tell him what the thing is? We'll do it in the next episode I have you on. Yeah, you tell him. You yeah. Okay, Billy wants me to teach him to fish. And that's fish with a pH. I don't want to be taught to fish. I understand. You want to be given the opportunity to fully learn about the band fish so that you can decide that you don't like them. I already don't. I understand yeah. this. Okay. Uh, they seem like nice guys. Don't well, get me that, wrong. I mean, that, but... that doesn't mean you have to like their music. We seem like right. like jerks and bitter pill and people love our music. So I, well, I am like... a jerk, but <laughs> I don't get fish. Right. You want to get fish. It right. doesn't mean you, you need to like it. I get the the cultiness of it. Yeah. I don't mean that negative. No, no, I, uh, I totally know what you I, mean. I totally get that. It's like I get the dead. Yeah. But I, I even get like I like some of Dead the Dead's music. Sure. Uh, Same. But I'm not a deadhead and I Same. wouldn't do that thing. But I get that mentality. And you you, you want to okay, so this community, is all this is actually that. a great conversation because I'll think about now that I know and I know we've had this over the last several months in fact, but right. now that that contextualizes a little better for yeah. me. So I'll come up with the way yeah. and if any of you out there are fish fans and you want to help me You're probably not going to like what I have to say. No, no, no. <laughs> That's a, it like my goal in this isn't to convince you to like fish. I I I mean, listen, I used to I you know me, I'm an apple guy. I know. Um, I used to do a ton of windows consulting for people. I used to be an Apple guy. Right. It, but like people would ask me, my windows clients would ask like, how come, when are you going to try and get me to buy a Mac? Like right. is, it would be, there would be some version of that question fairly early on in the well, relationship. Well, to be fair, you know, Apple is windows. I mean, it, it is. I don't even know what that means. So I'm not even going to well, windows is that. a software. It's a platform. Yeah. And it's pretty much the same thing. Well, yeah. I mean, they copied from one another all the way yeah. up. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, it, but, but people would ask me like, when are you going to try and convince me to buy a Mac? And I'm be, I, my answer would always be the same. It'd be never, never buy your own thing. And, yeah. and I'm like, I'm here to support you. If there's something you're doing where I think you would be better off with a Mac. And I know in my head that that means the pain and friction of converting uh, it, then I will yeah. advise you, but otherwise yeah. I don't want to be the your thing. the one who yeah. caused you the pain. You've yeah. chosen this platform. I'm going to stick with it. So 
yeah, my 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 goal in in this teaching Billy about fish thing about yes, yes. I, I know, but it sounds better when and I I've say gone teach out of Billy my way to fish to avoid everything I can right. Uh, but and, teaching and, you to fish would is not about evangelizing them. It's about finding the things so that you understand it. That's all. Mm. And it's it's because you've asked. I we and yes, I think it it would make an interesting podcast. Right. Uh, a friend of mine does a podcast yeah. about Taylor Swift. Yeah. And he's not a Swift fan at all. Sure. I think he might be a little bit at this point. Well, he's been hard, doing it for a couple of years right. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, but he, he, he does the podcast with a friend who is 100% a Swifty. Sure. And she's like super smart. Yeah. Knows, and just as a human being, but also like everything about Taylor Swift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a um, fan. She, she's a huge Swifty. Sure. And that's kind of, I think, what we're going to yeah. try to do. Yeah, we'll do you a know, little Tomer, segment on who is it. also in Bitter Pill, is also a huge fish fan. Yep. And I, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Yeah, I don't get well, it. And and you may, we will get, we will make sure you have all the information to possibly get it. But there's, there's, I, I you might not have an L, enough LSD. <laughs> I don't see. I don't think it. I don't think drugs are the answer, Billy. No, not even nitrous. Definitely not nitrous. They, I mean, there's a lot of that after the shows. Oh, is it after they do it at the show? It's, yeah, the the streets are littered with nitrous balloons. It's ridiculous. Because from what Homer told me, it's you know. Nobody in the show is doing nitrous, okay. as far as I know. I don't know, but you know, you would you would drugs. see that you would see that in the show. I I I, I don't, but not like not when I go see shows. Yeah. I I actually really like to be sober when I go Damn see right. shows. Yeah, really. I'm kind of the same. Yeah, I I I mean, I can I can you know drink on my couch or whatever. Yeah. But going to see shows, though, I, I did have to drink at other. the Lou Reed show. It was not good. I can, yeah, I can understand that once you've sort of like accepted that this is this not going to be what I want. I'll be at the bar. <laughs> I'm going to go to the bar now. I'm going to I'm going to help f- sort of mitigate the terribleness of this scenario. But to me, that's the like I yeah I don't I, I I'd prefer yeah. to be sober and and remember the show and yeah. like, like engage with it. Well, we it's don't have a, a name for this podcast yet. Well, we'll do, do it as a segment on this. Oh, do it. Okay. That's yeah. what I'm saying. We'll do it as a, you know, a, a segment of, of this show and we'll see how people like it. Yeah. And, All right. you know, yeah, yeah, that sort of thing. All right. I'm going to play the theme music now, Billy, because otherwise we'll never, ever stop. So the theme music's playing. You don't have headphones on, so you can't hear. But it's actually. Yeah, but you, don't you have to do the thing? Yeah. Well, you have to do the thing. You have, what? Always be prepared? Well, that's the Boy Scout motto. Oh, is is it? Always be prepared. What's the, what's the Gig Gab motto? Always be eggs all the way through. Always beer. Always beer. Performing. Always beer performing. That's the one. (laughs) (laughs) I'm terrible.